I yeah. see this this kid, he's about 17, 18. Fucking little, nerd. Little, little blue little belt. Nerd, little sporty face kid. And I'm like, <laughs> skinny, tiny. I'm like, I'll have him. I'll have him. <laughs> I'm sporting. <laughs> blue belt and all that. Mid. Uh, the 20 seconds later, I'm tied and not fucking uh, top on it. Mad, innit? It's, it? it's mad. And I'm like, wow, this is this is, this is is unbelievable. This. When you see now the people who's doing it, like the likes of Mark Zuckerberg, who looks like the biggest nerd in the world. He's now, obsessed Tom Hardy's with, fucking bossing it. Tom Hardy. I was I, meant to compete against him in December, I wasn't I? Was Didn't oh. fucking drop his ass. <laughs> 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 Chop his ass, didn't you, Tom? <laughs> Chop his ass. Tony and Sarah Jeffries, welcome uh, to South Shields and welcome to Paul Moore Talk Shit. Thank you, Paul. You know what's <laughs> funny? And I was telling Sarah on the way up. Uh-huh. I very first heard of you when I opened my first gym in Los Angeles. And I was looking for ways to build a gym and grow the gym. And I got into podcasts and I looked for podcasts. And <laughs> Isn't that mad? Yours was the number one that came up. And I was uh-huh. like, what's this podcast giving you tips to grow your gym? And I clicked and I was like, this, this this fucker sounds like he's from Sunderland. I'm like, who is this lad? And I was like, wow. And then I loved your content, what you were putting out. I was like, uh, this is amazing. And I had you on all the time. In it, my dad. To the point to the point where she was like, I'm fucking sick of his voice. Turn him off. <laughs> Turn him off. And then, Mate, I get that all the time. I get that all the time. <laughs> the worst part is now, Tony, because now I'm working with women. The fucking husbands hate us. <laughs> there's one, there's two women that have, we've run an event here or like in a hotel or we do a lot of football stadiums and we're running an event and there's women who aren't allowed to come because their husbands thinks, think I'm banging them because they're sick of hearing oh, me voice all the time. Oh, I'm like, what? <laughs> Number one, have you seen her? <laughs> no, I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm joking. So Sarah, Tony, I'm going to get straight down to the, to the, to the business. I'm not, we're not going to do too much backstory here. What's happening right now? Cause you two are doing some, Pretty fucking cool shit. <laughs> We've lived in California for 12 years. I've built uh, a seven-figure business out there in the gym industry. Mm-hmm. And over the last 12 months, me YouTube's really blew up, yeah. and as well as me online stuff. So now I can basically work anywhere in the world and earn a living. Yeah. So why do we want to you know, live in California, even though we've got three young kids? Mm-hmm. We're going to homeschool the kids, and we're going to travel the world and... Mm-hmm explore the world for, for, for 12 months at least. And see I mean, that's kind of mad, right? I, but really I want to throw mad? something in here because I'm intrigued. Are you fully in on this? Were you, I am, Did you yeah. just die straight in? No, or? I am. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll, we just went for it. Yeah. Like, we got, to, we got to a point where we thought, let's just do it. We can. Let's just go. Yeah. So yeah. I quit my job. Yeah. And we just thought... So was that quite a fast decision then to say, because quitting your job is quite no, a big deal. It, Everything just aligned. It was really funny how it happened. Yeah. We, we moved to a beautiful house. So I had everything. Mm-hmm. I got a new job. like, And then it just like everything fell into place. Yeah. It was so weird. Th- th- things, things start changing. And <clears throat> when we realized just how expensive it was in California and the yeah. price were going up, and then the homeless people in Los Angeles like taking over, yeah. we take the kids for a walk down the street and we see someone like an homeless fella having a piss or having a shit or, or taking drugs and all that. Mm. I was like, oh, I'd leave work and then I'd say, oh, I've just, I've just kicked him out of the ER. Let's like quickly run away. Aye. And it was like, shit. do we want to bring our kids up here? Uh, maybe, we, maybe we will go back there. Yeah. I'll never say never, but yeah. it's like, well, we've got this opportunity to, to travel. Yeah. And because of the COVID situation with the homeschooling, the kids were used to that. Mm. And it's like, let, 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 let's give it a go and, and see what happens. I'm going to ask a really selfish question here because I'd love to do this, right? How did you, were you really comfortable with the homeschooling thing or was it something no. that, well, you're not? No, definitely Because obviously you used to, ju- did you ju- guys just go to normal school in Sunderland? Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you go to school together? Yeah. yeah. No, no way. Yeah. Me, we, were, we went to nursery together when we were five years old. No way. And uh, our wedding invitations was our nursery picture because we were on the same Oh, picture. shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, wild. We, we didn't start seeing each other until we were like 20. Aye. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he blossomed. He wasn't. <laughs> I've seen photos of him. Yeah, it definitely has. It definitely has. So, you obviously went to a normal school, and homeschooling's not a normal thing, though, is it? When you think homeschooling, you think, oh, little weirdos. Aye, with hippie parents. Like, yeah. hippie parents yeah. smoking exactly. weed and that. Yeah. Aye. That's what you think, but Aye. it's not. It, it, we just looked at it differently after COVID. And yeah. And never in a million years thought, I love being at work full time, love mm. my career, and never mm. in a million years thought, I'm going to be a homeschool full time with me cri- three kids. I loved leaving them with me mum and dad and going to work. It was amazing. <laughs> so now what we're doing, but it's actually really good. And are the kids really okay with the homeschooling thing? Are they not? They are. I, so they've, they've done like 
one, our oldest one was eight, has done one year of proper school because with the COVID stuff. Oh, shit, that, right, that, aye. That kicked in. Aye. So they don't really know much different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, they've got a few friends in that that they'll be missing, yeah. uh, which is hard for us because if they'll mention it. Um, yeah, they're a similar age though, aren't they? How yeah. old are they again? Yeah, so we've got eight, seven, and uh, five. Yeah, so, so they're quite... Right, got it right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's great. And I think the biggest worry about homeschooling, if there is one, is the interaction with other kids. You know, uh, like, yeah. like that's the big thing. I mean, you know, Paul, yeah. and like you build relationships when you're a kid mm -hmm. with people who you might not know. My, my best mates, I've been mates with them since I was like 10 years yeah. old. So that's I the big worry. I think my mates when I was 10 might all be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe it's a good thing then, right? <laughs> uh, so when you're traveling then, like all the interact with other kids, are you doing that? Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, we try and make sure that they do. Yeah, we got them into jujitsu, which is great for kids, which you yeah, know this as well. And we take them to jujitsu uh, classes yeah. and then with gymnastics as well. We try yeah. to get them to do as much as we can outside. Yeah. Obviously, it's not the same is if they were going to school with kids every yes, single yes, day. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think that's got its pros and its cons as well with, with kids, because kids are mean, as you know, and they're away from that. But yeah. does that, you know, do you need to have that in your life? A kid being mean to you to help you build mm -hmm. up resilience? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I'm sure they're that. fucking mean to each other. My <laughs> kids are. Yeah. yeah. My kids are, I. I yeah. always say my daughter, she'll be fine if anything kicks off, because her brother's giving her shit all the time. Mm -hmm. right. Do you know what so I mean? She's, she's got that younger... She's got the younger kid strength because she's getting ragged about of her brother. So she, when someone <laughs> her own age comes against her, she's ragging them about. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's mad. So, so where have you been so far? Uh, well, we've just basically started it. It's mad because we started our... We started in Siam. We, we started <laughs> yes, our 12 travel. months <laughs> travels in Siam. Was that last Easter? Was that Easter? No, no, this, no. This, 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 was, uh, this was... We really started the homeschooling stuff properly full on. Um, in October, we actually went to Thailand for a month. Yes. We went to Australia for a month to do some work back in Los Angeles. Yeah. And uh, we've been to Seattle and a few other places, New York. And now yeah. it's starting back here. And then next week, we're going to Rotterdam, then to Costa Rica. Yeah. And then and then would you say, so, so would you say it's kind of really starting now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and a month in Thailand and a month in Australia yeah. doesn't count. But in no. August, <laughs> it was so, it did like happen fast that we decided to travel. Yeah. But, and, because we're in um, Texas in August, and then our landlord goes, yeah, there's some things happening. We're going to put the rent up, and yeah. loads of things aligned. Yeah. And we're like, this is it. Like, we have to, it's now. Big fuck it moment. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it was a cost of 10000 a month just to live in where we were living, and yeah. that's not including food or, like, anything, yeah. just for living expenses, like the rent yeah. and then cars and a few other little things. Yeah. So it was ten grand a month just to just to... For base level, yeah. Before you got anything, yeah. And then it was like ten grand a month, and we've just been talking about Thailand there. For in Thailand, you can live like, <laughs> like a know, king, like a king for like five a king grand for a month. Ah, you can't. You know? uh, so it's like, should we stay here or should we just give it a go? And you know what? With this mate, it's like we can try it for twelve months, and if it doesn't work and we don't like it, we can always go back. Yeah. And with the education as well, there's a thing now which sounds really hippie-ish, it's called world schooling, where your kids are going to be learning from different cultures and different environments. Oh, really? What, I mean, that's going to be great for them to see this. And that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're doing well financially. We live in Los Angeles, where yeah. we've got a pool in the back garden, we've got yeah. everything we want, we've got all the toys in the world. Yeah. You know, um, it's so easy to spoil your kids. And hey, fuck me. Oh, Do you know you spoiled. mentioned Thailand there? We went, in 2018, we went to Thailand. My kids are quite, I'd consider them quite privileged and a little bit spoiled. Like you do, right? Yeah. I mean, what yeah. else are you going to spend money on if it's not your kids? Like, right. if, one, if we fly somewhere long haul, they're like, why am I not in business class? Are you fucking kidding? Because it's 20 grand. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? That's why. <laughs> but then we went to Thailand and we went on this like floating village and they built this village basically on sticks and like pallets, right? This whole village had evolved and there was kids like begging and that, just putting their hands out for money and my kids were like, like it was a big wake up call for them. Eye opener. Yeah. Big eye yeah. opener for them. See them. Yeah. What are some of the biggest doubts you've had about then? About this whole thing? The, there must be some fears everything. and doubts, <laughs> is it? I mean the, the the biggest doubts are for for me it's the it's the building the relationships, what we're touched on there. Yeah. Like will they be able to build these long term relationships with other kids mm -hmm. and interacting with other kids? That's that's just the biggest one. Yeah. Then another thing I guess is the the education. Is this homeschooling going to work? Yeah. You know, Paul, I mean, you're the same as me. We're from the same area. Yeah. But 
we're going against the grain here. Everything we've been taught and brought up yeah. up with, we're doing the opposite. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to, we are supposed to, you know, go to school and then after school get a job. Yeah, I'll go to college or something. Go to college, yeah. then yeah. get a job, yeah. then get married, and then yeah. have kids, and then your kids do the same thing, and yeah. that that's life. But you know, we only live once. So we yeah. want we want to try something completely new. Yeah, yeah just something like we were in the routine and doing it all, and then something didn't feel right. It just yeah. felt like we need to switch this up. Bored? Did you reckon? It's just bored. I don't I don't think boredom. Like boring. Ellie is so busy. There's always something to do. Just constantly, constantly on the go. Yeah. And then we looked at the girls, and then we just thought, let's just let's just try something. And yeah. I don't know if you want to tell the story. Um, he does. Like we were just thinking about what it's going to be like for the girls when they're older in LA. Yeah. Mm. Like that's why we put them in jujitsu to take care of themselves. Yeah. It's just like a. <laughs> it's you yeah, know what's matter you were saying we're talking about like long term friendships. I actually think most of my mates now, my best mates, I didn't meet them until I was maybe fifteen or sixteen. You know, change has done it. Right, you're, yeah. no, you're, you're it does totally change, right. doesn't it? I've got it some friends that maybe like one lad that I probably talked to from like junior school and even comp. Most of my mates I didn't meet until I started going out boozing and playing football right. and that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, I I agree with that. I agree, thing, I agree, I agree with that. Uh, and like I, I said with the. The education. Yeah. Say, are we doing the right thing? Are we not yeah. doing the right thing? And you, I think with kids, you never know. You could raise nah. them the wit by the book, and then they could turn out like little bastards. You could train, you could raise them, and not show them any love and that, and they could turn, turn out really good. Yeah, I think I think it's hard to really. It is hard because I I was talking to a friend of mine. He was like, "Why don't you put your kids in private school and that? You don't want them to get a better education." I was like, "Well, I know kids have went to private school and they didn't turn out any 100%. better than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, maybe the would, maybe the would. There's no way my son would go now. Right. He's got all of his mates and that a little few scruffy yeah. ones and that. <laughs> like he loves hanging out with them. No, there's good. no way he would go. Nina might because she's good at making friends and that. But I, and it's then, a, um, then the other thing about school is as well. So me, me sister. Uh, she did a, a, a degree later on in life. She's like she's forty now, and she's just passed like I think two years ago. And her degree was a great degree was in teaching mm-hmm. in beauty. beauty. And she told me the other day that because she's got a degree in teaching in beauty, she could get a job as a science teacher, as an English teacher, as a maths teacher because she's got this certain degree. Did you know that? I know my sister's got one in travel and tourism, and she can teach business. She never ran one. You, right. So, so you got this How degree in education, that? and you can teach any education. Yeah, that's so she could get a job in a in a in a secondary school teaching kids maths, and she's got no idea where maths because yeah. she's got this degree. Yeah. And then once you're in the school teaching maths, you could you've got a, the goal is for them to pass a test. Yeah, you teach them to pass a test. Yeah. you heard that? Well, before, well, right? mate, mate. <laughs> Here's the bad part. <laughs> My daughter had homework on Sunday nine. Dad, can you help us with this? <laughs> I couldn't. Couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't do it. Yeah, it was like tough. fractions and shit. I was like, I had to get my 12-year-old son down to show her. He was like, I'm not showing her. I'm not sh- Dad, I'm not showing her. Yeah. Well, right. for, well, she wouldn't help me. Then right, it just ended right. up in this kickoff, so we just left it. I said, yeah. you, you're gonna have to, I couldn't believe how hard the homework was. Yeah. yeah. It definitely, it made us question like how the schools were teaching them. Like, yeah. they don't, schools don't tend to nurture what the kids are interested in. Like Jade, our oldest, it's maths, cries, drama every time I try and teach her like a little bit of it. I'm 43 and I still do that. My <laughs> wife's like, look at the books. Right? Look yeah. at the profit and loss sheets and that. I'm like, no, I have to. Yeah, <laughs> and I always would focus on that. She's not doing well. Yeah. Give her a science book. She's there for an hour, yeah. two hours. Yeah. So focused. Yeah. Why aren't they encouraging that? Why aren't they nurturing that? I heard something. I heard a guy talk about this. He's called Dr. John D. Martini. He's fucking brilliant, right? American guy. I went on a course with him in, in 2020 in Dublin. And he's talking about this ADHD being a big thing. And he's like, but if you put someone, a kid with ADHD, you put them in front of something that they love, it goes away. It's not a problem. So a bad example is probably you put a kid with ADHD on a video game, you can't get him off it. He's got an attention surplus disorder. You can't stop him from, you'll get like this with business. People get like this with business. I can't stop mm-hmm. thinking about it. Yeah. But then you put me in front of something else. I'm not fucking interested. Yeah. Example, I'm like, I love business. I mean, I love jujitsu. You get obsessed with it, right? Yeah. But then you say, are you interested in crypto? People can't get their head around why I'm not interested in crypto. Right, yeah. Or even property. I've got a few, but I've got no interest in it. Yeah. Like why? My, well, I look at it and I'm like this. I mean, brain can't comment the numbers, but I'm obs- it's a really interesting thing. I've that. never right. thought about that before, yeah. but I'm, I think I'm the same as you. Put yeah. me in front of a, a, something business and I'll be there all day. Yeah. Put me in front of a spreadsheet where you've got to read it and tick stuff. Like, and that's business as well, but you're like, oh. oh like, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's like, I'm not, uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. So then in school terms, you'd be labelled as ADHD. Aye. And instead you're like, no, they don't conform. 
they just want it's to go for something that. But then you've got people that fucking so Kath out there is obsessed with spreadsheets. I'll ask her some shit. Oh, I've got a spreadsheet on that. I'm like, who uh, like a business thing, I'll, like a sales thing, I'll be like, who, who replied to this email and who can we follow up with today? She's like, I'll just check my spreadsheet. I'm like, you got a spreadsheet for that. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a mad it's thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But some people love that and some people love this. It's it's a, it's an yeah. interesting thing. So business then, like how are you guys doing this? Also, I want to ask you about your YouTube as well, but <laughs> how are you guys kind of funding this whole trip? It's the, the it's. I don't it's, even know whether it's a trip. Is it a trip or is it's it a, it's life. a lifestyle now, isn't it? Well, ah, yeah. it's, I lifestyle. guess it's it's the life that we've been funding for years. But now we're going to do that. Like I said, it was ten grand a month. Ten grand a month will cover what we what we're going to do. Yeah, um, I think. But we but we good. Like the the fundings is coming from uh, all my online stuff. Yeah, uh, that that's bringing it in. So yeah. I was getting a few sponsors here for for a YouTube and that. Yeah. but it's mainly coming from from that stuff. Yeah, YouTube is. Unbelievable, and yeah. it's really changed my life. Yeah, and what yeah. was funny is in 2020 when the gyms closed down, my income was kind of slowing down or stopping. Yeah, and then I went two feet in with YouTube and got obsessed, like we we're talking about, you get obsessed yeah. with stuff. Yeah, and then that's just went yeah through the roof because your gyms literally there was we did you have two you had two gyms two when gyms, COVID started, yeah. didn't it? And it just it literally I remember talking to you during that time actually where you were like you said something like you couldn't open the gym but you still had to pay rent. Yeah, something fucking mental yeah, like that. I was like, was really? Exactly that. Uh, was that where the, yep. the government closed the gyms down, but yep. we still had to pay twenty two grand a month rent, <laughs> oh, uh, which we didn't pay, and then that built up, and yeah. and because we couldn't, we weren't bringing in revenue. So yeah. how the fuck are you supposed to pay for yeah. this money? And then we're going through a bit of a lawsuit right now yeah. with that with that company, which yeah. is which is crazy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, mate. Uh, so now it's it's all online, which is amazing. So it's kind of like for you, COVID was then, and I'll say this about my business as well. A bit of a blessing, yeah, for me, because I got more eyes on me. Shit, I got a book deal. People realised the hard. They're like, actually, I've lived with this guy for twenty years. I don't even fucking like him, <laughs> <laughs> but didn't yeah, I didn't see it because I was at work yeah. or whatever. That that kind of shit happened all that time. So well, you went all in on YouTube with, that, with that, Paul. When yeah. you said it was a blessing for you, it yeah. was a blessing for me. It, it wasn't really. We made it a blessing for ourselves. Mm, yeah, right. We we did that ourselves. You could have hid behind your fucking set, e, right? Exactly. It could have been a blessing for anyone who went yeah. and put themselves out there and put the work in and the obsession, like yeah. you probably did, that yeah. I did as well. And that's how we how we got lucky. How we created our own look. Yeah, I love and, it. And and then we built from there. Yeah, I love it. Uh, there was a question I want to ask you, right? If anyone ever asked me about YouTube, I'm like, oh, go and follow Jaffa, right? <laughs> Like who's Jaffa? <laughs> Tony man. And then I'm like, he just talks about boxing. So what I want to ask you, right, was how many videos you put out a week? Uh I put 14 out a month. 14 out a month, right? And that's that's your full length videos. What about reels and that? Well, so that's including that's including the shorts. I put yeah. two two full length out uh, a week and yeah. then some shorts as well. Yeah. It's 14 a month. See, but you're talking about the same thing all the time. And this <laughs> this blows people's head off. I'm like, he's just talking about boxing. Yeah. How do you come up with all these ideas? I'm a very creative person, but it's, it is tough. It's tough to come up with all of these different ideas. So what I've started doing now is reaction videos where I'm reacting to other people's I videos. I did one on Andrew Tate yesterday. It's fucking... You did? I'm, get, I'm getting a little bit of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I had to turn the notifications <laughs> off. Yeah, I, did. I, did. I, did. I did two on Andrew Tate. They both blew up went viral. Did they? So doing the reaction Some videos... Some fucking weird people on there. <laughs> Fuck me. I'm like, are you... You're wanking over Andrew Tate, you. You're in your ma's basement with your cock in a headlock with Andrew Tate videos <laughs> on. Like, I'm, I'm watching them, I'm like, really? Yeah. I'm, I also now know that what I've just said, one of my team's going to make it into a clip and I'm going to get even more shit. Look at that camera, like, make this cunt into a clip and I'll get battered. <laughs> oh, you will. It, and I mean, it's good. It's good. So content, reaction so. videos are the things reaction, that are... Reaction videos, I'm putting them out there. But, you know, I've, I've taught how to throw the perfect jab like five times. Oh, not, really? Like and, on different videos and just got to do different ways of doing it. And, yeah. But there is only so much you can do on boxing education. That's why now I've got to think out, outside the box. And my thing is right now, like I could do a video on how to fight a short or southpaw opponent and yeah. put that on YouTube, put it on a tank. Yeah. It'll not do very well on the views because yeah. it's very specific. Yeah. But if I do a, a, a video on three tips to punch harder, yeah. it'll blow up. Another thing that's blow up is street fighting videos, right? I think it's people that aren't boxers that are watching videos then. On the street fighting ones, I think it is. Yeah. People want the confidence to go out and, you know, people's worried about... Be like them, protect themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I've done some street fighting videos and they actually really blew up. Yeah. I remember one time I'm in I'm in Box and Burn Gym. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, it was before I went to the gym. I got a phone call from the receptionist at Box and Burn Gym. Tony, uh, there's two police officers here. They want to see you. Oh, and I'm fucking like, hell. 
oh, all right. He said, I said, I'm not there. I says, I'll be there tomorrow. Like, okay, what time? I said, 10 o'clock. So the next day I'm there. I'm actually training Lewis House. You know Lewis yeah, House? Yeah, yeah, I know Lewis I'm training Lewis at nine. And Madly we- enough, I got recommended to be a guest on his podcast like yesterday, I think. Oh, really? Someone said, what will I put you forward, forward as? I like, whatever you want. If I get on, I'll- You should do it. I'll be buzzing, I. That would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Buzzing, I. So I finished training at Lewis at 10. I'm sitting on the ring and uh, the receptionist coming to say, Tony, the police out there. I'm like, oh shit, what have I done? Uh-huh. And I'm trying to think because where we're from, we're like, oh, what have it's I done? True, it's uh, it's the mentality. F- where's uh-huh. the, why is the police here for me? So I'm all nervous now anyway. I'm like, Lewis, the police there. He's like, oh, what, what, what's happening? Like, 5 0. 5 0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I walks out and uh, there's two busies there in the. In the busies? <laughs> <laughs> busies? You went full Macam there. <laughs> full Macam, two busies. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So a couple of busies there and then the police cars are outside and they've got the guns on. I'm like, oh, I was a gun. He went, Tony, uh, he shook me hand. He went, uh, I've seen these street fighting videos on YouTube. I'm like, Aye. all right. I thought he was going to see you. Stop them. He went, Aye. And I'm actually a massive fan. I think they're great. No. So I want to bring the Santa Monica police department into the gym. And I want you to teach them street fighting moves no. and street fighting techniques. And I'm like, oh, all right, man. That's, that's Santa Monica gym is the one that I've been to, right? Yeah, I've been changed, that one. I changed location now. Oh, did you? Eye. So I'm like, all right, sound. Bear <laughs> in mind, I don't really know much about street fighting. I kind <laughs> of blag these videos. <laughs> Week later, I've got like 15 Santa Monica Police Department busies in there, no. all in the workout gear, and I'm teaching them street fighting. <laughs> I'm like, well, what am I doing here? Ma- would you teach them something different now you've done jujitsu? Uh, no, uh, you went down uh, the pole guard. What, what was funny was well, the, the fellow who the sergeant who was the fan of us, aye. he was a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Oh, really? So I'm thinking, me, you can teach oh, them, not hell, me. Aye. Not aye. me. Through the Gracies as well. I suppose people want to know how to punch though, don't they? Yeah, you want to know how to know if someone's going to throw a punch, really. Oh, so shit. reaction okay. builds and things. Because uh, the police have got to be aware of, you know, when people's going to punch. Them, right? So uh, we did that and I was like, wow. This is, this is, it was so surreal. I'm in Los Angeles from Sunderland aye. teaching all these coppers out of street fight. <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, man. You know? I that know. is mad. Yeah. Is that one of the maddest things that's happened to you since yeah, moving man. to LA or doing your yeah, YouTube yeah. shit? So, some, some. I mean, I was the, I was the face of Levi's in two thousand. Oh shit! Oh, and you were on that fucking what was that Black TV Black show? List. The Blacklist. I mm. remember that. I had it on, and I watched it. What what season was it? Se- Fil- season one. I season one. I knew it was early on. I was watching it. I'm like, I had to rewind it <laughs> on Sky. I'm rewinding. I'm like, that fucking Jaffa. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, mad. So that, uh, I saw signs this for you. I moved to Los Angeles. This fella, who I know, he was like, Tony, you need to get yourself an agent. I've got this agent. I want to, let's, let's jump first. Before you jump at that though, I'm going to interrupt you because I want to know how you guys ended up in Los Angeles because that's not a normal fucking movie either, is it? Not from Sunland, definitely not. No. No. So it was, um, Sarah always wanted to move away and, and travel. Yeah, mm. when we first met, I said, don't get comfortable. I'm gonna, I'm about to go. <laughs> yeah, are really. You, what, what you're doing? Are you coming? Are you staying? Yeah, really? We want to move out of Sun. Uh, um, and so when I was when I was pro boxer, uh, I drew one fight, and uh, and me promoter Frank Maloney wanted Kelly. Now uh, we're gonna train, change trainer. He's like, you know, I've got this trainer in Los Angeles yeah. called Tommy Brooks. Um, he worked with Mike Tyson at Vander Holyfield. Do you want to go there? I was like, oh yeah. So I went. I met met Tommy yeah. and start training. I was side by side with Vander Holyfield in training camps for his last oh, few shit. fights. And did you go with him then, Sarah? We were you working holi- or something? We were going on holiday with some mates, like just by chance, and then said, "Oh, while we're there, we'll pop in and see this trainer who yeah. might want to work with you." Yeah. So we were already there on holiday. Oh, I see. Um, and then yeah, and then and then I was like, "Oh yeah, let's we move to Los Angeles." All right, so did be training camps out there, mm-hmm. and we loved the place, and we ended up moving there, mm-hmm. and that's kind of how we got our green cards and, and moved out there. Yeah. And then yeah. when we moved there, I met this scout, uh, Paul Kane, and he was like, Tony, you need to get yourself an agent. You're in LA now. I'm like, all right. He's like, so yeah. I, I met this agent fella and he was like, I've got an audition for you. Uh, I'm like, what the Were fuck you still boxing then then? Uh, this was this was after my last fight when I was waiting yeah. for my hands to get better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said, yeah, uh, I want you to go to this audition. I've never been to an audition in my life. So I'm like, all right, sound. So I, I went to Hollywood Boulevard yeah. And I went me boxing burger, yeah, and yeah. it was for a Levi's thing. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, mate, and there's all these fucking really good looking fellas coming in, <laughs> sitting down. And I'm like, No, he rang us, like, I'm going to go because they're all gorgeous. Like, I'm what am I doing here? Tense, <laughs> and I'm there, like, all sweaty. 
I'm like, I'm gonna leave. And then Liv Tyler uh, from Armageddon, she come in with her fucking boyfriend who was a stud oh, as well. Cr- I'd have been crushing on her, she's lush. <laughs> lush. I'm like, this is no place for me, this. Uh-huh. I phoned up, I was like, I'm gonna leave. And she's like, no, just stay. So anyway, I stopped and I went in and they're all gone. We were the direct name, we're all gone around this. Were you really gonna leave? And Sarah uh-huh. just yeah, said, don't she was leave. Like, no, just stop. Ah, this yeah. exact same thing happened to me last year. I was at an author's party and it was in London. And there was like, there was real celebrities there, like chefs and that. And I'm standing there, not drinking. Everyone's drinking champagne and that. And I'm on the, and I rang Leslie, I said, I'm going. And I was waiting for a couple of you mates, James Smith and that were coming, other authors that I knew. And I was standing there, I was like, I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm leaving, I shouldn't be here. I'm totally out of me depth here mm-hmm. and sh- leslie made me stay as well and we yeah. ended up having a good time and making some sick contacts aye? so what happened after Class. that then you stayed and then so yeah i stayed and uh went around and they were like oh yeah i've been le- talking to all these fucking good looking fellas models and all that oh yeah i'm aye. a model i'm doing this they come to me and i was like i'm not an actor i'm not a model i'm a former boxer and he loved the story from what i give him aye. and i ended up getting the part for this levi's campaign i was one of the faces of levi's Worldwide on That's fucking mad. billboards <laughs> in Berlin <laughs> on on taxis on the underground trains and all that uh, so, uh, on commercials and anyway so I did it I got a few grand for it, it wasn't much but mm-hmm. I was on the the trailers before in the cinema mm-hmm. and I was at the gym one day and this fellow coming he went hey Tony I seen you on the uh, when I was at the cinema I seen you on the trailer before he went hey do you do TV I'm like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. He's like, uh, all right, I've got a show. I've just wrote this show called The Blacklist. He said, uh, I would love to give you a partner if you, if you want. I've got a grip off. I'm like, oh, nice, yeah. A week later, I'm in fucking New York City shooting The Blacklist as an actor. That's Never mad. done an acting in my life. That's mad. And uh, and and that's kind of how I got The Blacklist. Funny story about that as well. You know, they give us this like really hard rubber gl- gun, right? A fake gun. Uh-huh. And, in well, my first scene, I was with the main star. I think she's called Megan. Mm. And um, I've got to see it. Be, I've got to go behind her with a gun and see it. Hello, love. And then, like, hit her with a gun. It's probably why I've not had any more acting. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably why, I mean, yeah, my acting career ended. So uh, I go up to her and she... What accent did it have to do with him? Mine. So oh, it really? Great, I, it, was, it was perfect. So it was, and you so didn't say, I'll read? I said, I, I said, so I, I said, hello, love. <laughs> so I, I went, hello, love. And she turned around and I went, fuck off. And I hit her with a gun and she fell <laughs> down, right? He hit her. And then oh, you actually, actually hit her? And then, the, the, and then they went, uh, cut. And she stood up and she went, has he got to hit me with a gun? And the stunt fella come run up and Tony, don't hit her with a gun. You can miss her by this far. Oh, shit. And uh, we'll make it look like a hit. If she gets injured, it's going to cost us millions. I'm like, oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's Hello. mad. Yeah. So anyway, and then, I'm, then, I've, then I've done acting as well. So that's kind of yeah. how that happened. But, you know, what we spoke about earlier on, it's like, I wasn't lucky. I, I, got, I got these opportunities. I, yeah. I created these opportunities. But you made those opportunities happen. And then, you know, I took them with both hands. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was crazy. And then I come friends with that, with that uh, director, the writer, with that Joe Carnahan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, it's been great. I want to come back to YouTube because something that a lot of the, uh, what I like to talk about with everybody is this, because I think there'll be many people listening who struggle with like doing what they really want to do because the skating case, it doesn't work. Or, putting something out there in case they get criticised. You must get a lot of shit on your stuff, yeah, right? You know what? I, I, actually, I actually don't get that much shit because mine is like, I mean, I can see how you get shit because you've, you've you're very opinionated with yeah. your stuff. Yeah. I give my my knowledge, I mean, I guess it's my opinions, yeah. but it's my knowledge on, on boxing yeah. where it's like, this is how you do it. And some people might say, well, I would do it that way. I would like, yeah. all right, well, that will work as well. Yeah. So it's, 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 you know... Yeah, it's it's simple like that, but you you're right about people putting content out, and so when Sarah stopped nursing, and um, I have, I've got a, a big team now that work for us, yeah. that's creating me doing me edits and managing me channel. I was like Sarah, you need to get on, you need to get on on YouTube. I was still nursing at the time. I was an educator oh, in the ER, too. and then Forsters supported us to do this video. Yeah. We're just sitting around and talking about like health stuff. Yeah. And I said, oh, well, you have to do that. I was talking about the rice method. method right, aye, like, aye. That I would tell a million people a day at work what to do. Yeah. He goes, what's that? I said, well, you know, R stands for this. I, he said, you should do a YouTube video on that. What was it again? Rest. Like rest, ice, ice compression, compression elevate. Aye. It's changed probably now. But yeah, anyway, I think it has, we're doing, and he said, just, why, why don't you do a YouTube video? I've got this full team. I said, definitely not. I'm not standing in front of a camera. No way. <laughs> My wife was exactly the same. Yeah. No, not I'm not dating. That's your, that's your thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. Your, that's your thing. Definitely not. And, and then. The, so she was like, I'm not doing it. I'm like, Sarah, you've seen how it's changed 
our lives already. You could, yeah. With the health, you could really change your life if this blows up and all that. And she's like, no. And the reason why she didn't want to do it was because she was so afraid what people at work would say about her. Mm. She was like, these will talk behind me back. I'm like, yeah. so my thing, and when she told us that I got a red mist and I was like, you know what? If someone who you know slags you off for doing something that you want to do, yeah. fuck that person. Yeah. You don't want that person anywhere near you in your life, in our lives. If yeah. someone's not going to support you, fuck them. Yeah. Who wants them? Mm -hmm. And that made her feel a bit better, but still it wasn't, yeah. it was still scary. So did any what? of the things that you thought would happen, happen? No. No. Because I remember after doing the I first- I mean, if they're talking about you behind your back, you might not know anyway. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> releasing the first video, it, it's kind of stupid when you think people are talking about you. You're not really that important. Nah, Nobody gives a shit about you. I agree. Yeah. No so, one thinks about us as intensely as we think about right? ourselves. Right. Right? So the first video released, and I had to go into work the next day. I was like, I can't. Oh, shit, I'm really? I'm sick. I'm not. I'm not going in. This is uh, the end of my life. Did anyone even sick. see it? And I went in, and nobody said anything. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even see it. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> it's a bad thing, though, isn't it? It's really mad. And but it just it still gets us now. Like, I still. Feel awkward. Are you still doing regular stuff then now? I'm not as much because yeah. I'm homeschooling the girls, but yeah. you know, I still get that feeling. But then I just have to think, like, nobody cares. And if they do care, like, you know, why do they care? Uh, like, it's really crazy. Feeling. It's a, it is an interesting thing. Like, actually, this, so this morning I came in for a bit. I've got I've got a big speaking gig down Manchester Saturday, and my wife makes us she forces us to rehearse all the time. And I have a bit in there where I talk about a video that I've made, that clip video. And I'm like, I oh, sat yeah. on that video. Twelve million people have seen that video now, right? Wow. Wow. And I sat on that video for eighteen months. I yeah. made it eighteen months before I released it. And my mate was keep sitting. My mate who made it with us, who he he filmed it and he made it cinematic right he was like why are you not dropping the video i ended up ignoring him in the end didn't speak to him for about six months because i was like he so kept asking us why i'm not dropping it it's because tell sarah about the i've seen the video but tell her about, about the video what it is what it's so the video is basically me describing me in 2014 i lived in marbella we lived in marbella so we moved there my daughter i was born there and i was drinking and sniffing and partying i basically had a two-year lads holiday mm -hmm. leslie was pregnant with my daughter she had a two-year-old and me, and I'd have these fucking meltdowns because I was going on the sesh, then coming home and then losing me shit. And then I got diagnosed bipolar. And then I came home and it just got worse because I had a new more dealer. I didn't even know anyone in Marbella. No one. I just go out with random people. Wow. That's how bad it was then. And I had all this money. I was make, this is when I started making money online, probably when you were listening at the podcast. I had this newsletter. That I, remember the newsletter? Yeah, I had yeah. that, making all this money. I didn't know what to do. And I moved back and it just got worse. And then I ended up suicidal on the Cliffs and Shields. And uh, I made this video about, probably about a year later, when I was really starting to get me shit together, I got off the meds, lost five stone, just started getting together. I made this video and I'm talking about basically what it's like to be like that. Because mm -hmm. people talk about it, that you see a lot of people talking about it who haven't actually been mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. They're talking about it theoretically. And I just mm -hmm. described what I went through and this video just blew up. Mm -hmm. But I sat on it because people are like, you're talking about, you're saying it exactly how I feel it. Mm -hmm. You can tell you've been there. But I sat in it for 18 months. I, I was scared of what, what people would think. Mm -hmm. I was like, what if my ma sees this? Because I'm talking about, oh, wow. I'm talking about coke abuse. I'm talking about booze abuse. I'm talking, fucking hell, I'm talking about wanking. I'm talking about taking ease. I'm talking about all this mad shit. And I'm like, what if my ma sees it? Yeah. Like, what if my mates see it? What if my dad sees it and stops me pocket money? <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? And Are I signed it for 18 months, and then it took me mum about two years. So, oh, Paul, I've seen that video about two, <laughs> two years, years later. later. <laughs> two years later, Paul, I like that video you did. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> All right. And well, then should should mention times. That should, Paul, remember that time you were home and that coke bag fell out your pocket? I was like, oh, I didn't know you'd seen that, man. Mm. People know. Right. But it's a mad thing, and it was sit on all these things, yeah. worrying about what people might think. And would you say that video has changed your life? Or changed, well, it's changed a lot of people's lives. Right. Because I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, then. And it was then when people started reaching out to me. I didn't do it for that reason. I didn't do it for any other reason than that. My mate was kept getting on me back about it, because I shot it off the cuff. It was completely off the cuff. Would make these marketing videos for the newsletter and for me supplement company make all these videos and at the end of the day I was like mate bring this camera I was right next to the cliffs where it was so bring this camera over here I've got something I need to say and then I just pulled all this shit out he was crying me mate he was crying he come from Sheffield he was crying I was like fucking hell <laughs> that felt great to get that off my chest and yeah. then everyone started reaching out to me and saying how have you turned it around how have you done this and I was like fuck I kind of felt like I had a duty to help people right mm -hmm. do you know what I mean yeah have you yeah. done have you done much more stuff on that I'm sure you have. I fucking hell, I did the, I did uh, 
me book on it last year. I did that. Right. I did the Tyne Theatre with a thousand people. Yeah. I did London last year. We're doing another book this year. So it's gone a bit mad every time I talk about it. People are like, oh, fucking hell. I think it's just because I've been through it. But even then, every time, and I still get that feeling sometimes I drop a video. Even yesterday, I never watch my videos back, right, ever. So I'll, get, I'll do them on there. I'll try and do them in one take if I can, right? I hate doing more than one take. I'm like, let's get five out in the next. Can I do five videos in 10 minutes? Fuck it, let's go. So I'll record them and then Connor will edit them. He'll upload them and that. Sometimes I'll give him a caption. A lot of the time he'll just do the caption as well. But yesterday I was like, I'm talking about Andrew Tate here. I need to watch it back. And I watched it back and I watched it back. And then I was like, Connor, do us a favor. When you upload it, turn off the notification so I don't get them. Mm -hmm. And it's mad I would still get that feeling in it. it? Instagram. Facebook, it's interesting how they're so different. All right. They're so different. Yeah. People on Facebook is a fucking cesspit. <laughs> Honestly, the comments on Facebook are so different at Instagram. It's the same video, but it's like a different level of people. In what way? The people on Facebook tend to be more, and it's weird, they just want to have a fight with each other. Like, I can look in the comments, I'm like, there's just people fighting in me comments. Right. Mate, I dropped, the, I, dropped the, uh, I dropped the post that just said, I think I'm going to do a video on Andrew Tate. There was 188 comments. Bloody hell. Yeah. Giving their opinion. Yeah. I didn't even give my opinion and people are going after us. Yeah. I was like, I haven't even said anything <laughs> and you're going after us already yeah. and they're mad. Wow. You should do but more. But Instagram's not really like that. Right. So I yeah. think TikTok is, but what I do with TikTok, I think I'm on quite a few followers on TikTok now. Maybe 50, 60,000 or something, yeah. but I don't, uh, I was on there for two days and my team said, eh, you need to come off TikTok. I was like, what do you mean? He said, not you, but you, can't have the app on your phone because I started arguing with so people straight away. Boring, yeah. uh, the first day, we dropped the video. Funny enough, it was me and Jamie Alderton. We did a video about ice baths or something and some kid came on saying, you two are irrelevant and chatting shit. And I, I didn't know it was a kid. He was called Daniel Bedenfield. Remember him? Yeah. Singer. Yeah. So I did it. You know, on TikTok, you can do like a response video. So instead of replying to a comment, you do a video oh, yeah, to them yeah. that goes yeah. on your feed. And I started singing Daniel Bedenfield songs. <laughs> and the kid was like, I don't know what you're singing, and I'm 10 years old. I was like, fuck. So, I'm 10 years old and I don't know what you're fucking singing. Oh so they were like, delete the app off your phone now, we'll run your TikTok. Uh, it's mad, isn't it? It's, it's mad. I like, didn't know who it was. Uh, right. Yeah, but the thing the thing now with content, if you've got them, which you have, in yeah. the, um, the portrait mode, yeah. you can be on every platform. Yeah. Mate, I'm getting nearly 2 million views a month on fucking Pinterest. Really? So who's watching boxing education videos on Pinterest? I, I didn't even know no people idea. using Pinterest. Yeah. I, don't, I, 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 don't, I haven't even got a login for it. Me, my team's putting stuff out there now yeah. and it's just building, building. Tell me about managing a team then. How are you finding that? Because that must be, that was at some point new. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was some point brand new to you. It, it really Same as was. me. Yeah. It's, and it's kind of one of them things that you learn as you go. Mm -hmm. I mean, with, with, the, with the gyms, it's different in person than it is virtual. I much yeah. prefer the virtual now. Oh, do you? The in person. Do you? Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got your office here. But I do a bit of both. Like, we have a hybrid model. Right. Like, we could go on holiday for two or three weeks and the business would still run. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I wouldn't, maybe if I was if I was prepared and planned enough, I wouldn't even have to. So, Thailand, I didn't even turn my phone on for 11 Class. days, no phone. Class. I couldn't do it for much longer, though, because mm -hmm. they would expect, your team kind of expects me to be here. And, and as well, if they're with in your phone off, is your yeah. head, like, fucking thinking... Yes, oh, get back on, get back on. Six or seven days, me creativity goes through the fucking roof. That's when I get my best ideas, when I'm not trying to get them. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know how people say they get them in oh, the shower yeah. out walking? Yeah. I get that all the time. Right, yeah. But I, six or seven days in, the first few hours, I feel like I've had my arm chopped off. <laughs> Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Oh, that's a nightmare. I'm going to leave my phone. Okay, great. An hour later, pass your phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your phone. <laughs> I'm gonna admit I'll do that as well. And both my kids have got phones, so it's even worse now. Dad, I thought you were staying off the phone. Yeah. I'll just check, son. Yeah. I go, son, go on me. How many followers I got on me TikTok? I'll ask him all the time. What are people saying? <laughs> It's hilarious. He's like, Dad, I'm not telling you. And he's like, I don't even follow you. Why would I follow you, Dad? <laughs> even <laughs> driving, even driving for an hour, or you drive, or make these notes. Like, oh, really? No? Well, when, I, when, when I'm driving, I'm like, submit a pop me. I'm like, Sarah, you need to write this down for us. And I'm, I'm not send your the, secretary. Send stuff to write stuff <laughs> down. But, uh, yeah, but with, I guess with the teams, I'm talking more about for my personal team. I've yeah. had, before COVID, we had 57 employees at Box and Burn Gyms. So I had a, oh, really? I had a, a ton of people. We had like 20. Nine or thirty trainers working for us. Oh shit! I never knew that. Yeah, it was huge, and that was pretty hard and exhausting. Yeah. And now I've got sixteen people working just for me on my virtual team. Sixteen's mad because I've got um, 
I've got my YouTube now is in eight different languages. <laughs> Shit. I'm getting it all dubbed now. And Did they do it in English? <laughs> Can you do it? <laughs> what, when, I, when, I that, when I pulled that out, people were saying, what about English? Patting the piss out. I, was like, oh, <laughs> I get oh, that all the time. Is yeah. What did you just say? Yeah. Mate, I went to Puerto Rico to do a gig. And I st- before I went on the stage, I'm talking to a few people and people are like, what are you saying? And then I was like, I'm going to have to talk mm-hmm. much slower. Yeah. That's all it is really. Yeah. It's just so you talk good. really fast. Yeah. I remember I did a podcast on the edge. You know, Chris Ramsey is a comedian. He's, him, he's, yeah. he's, a, he's big now Like he's selling out he's, Him and his missus For a podcast This is mad This blow your head off You love this They have a podcast It's probably the biggest podcast In the UK Right um, They got a TV show Out of it on BBC Wow, wow. And uh, they sold out The O2 Arena 20,000 people what? In 24 hours Bloody To do hell. a live podcast Bloody hell, Isn't that amazing, amazing. And I did a podcast With him in here And I hadn't seen him For maybe 7 years And I've known him A long time I've known him since about a year before me, so it was month or 13 years, and I hadn't seen him for ages since he blew up. He's, he presents children and needing that. Right. And oh, uh, I sat in here and I had a fucking scream with him. People say, what was your favourite podcast? I said that. Mm-hmm. But no one else could understand. People were like, it sounded great, but I can't understand what you yeah. do. Is he from around here? Like? I'm ah, from Shields, I. God. From Shields, I. Isn't that mad? Oh, yeah. ah, That's it. We're- Right when I said busy early on, you laughed. It's like uh, when I'm with people from Sunderland, I I, I go back to that accent. But in America, I would never speak. You talk that. much slower. You've got to. You've right? yeah. 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 got to. It's a weird thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, it is a weird thing. So where was I? So we're talking about the languages. That yes. I'm, so I, if you Google how many people in in the in the world speak English, it's only twenty five percent in the Latin American market. Huge. That's huge. Yeah, yeah that's huge. Massive. Huge. But it's twenty five percent of the world's population speak uh, English. And my mission, my my goal is to you know make the world a better place with boxing. Mm-hmm. That's me. That's my mission statement, really. Mm-hmm. And if I can only reach twenty five percent of the world with my videos, I'm not going to be able to you know do that. So that's why I've got me YouTube now creating eight different languages. Yeah. Uh, I've got people speaking Mandarin over me, over the top of me. And that's it's, mad. It's the, mad. Video, the, the Spanish one's my favorite. The, See him. Uh, <laughs> I've got Arabic as well, and I've got. I've, this looks yeah. like he speaks Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I was it was mad. I was at a jujitsu tournament in um, in LA, mm-hmm. and some lad come running up and said, "Ah, and just start speaking always in Spanish." No, really. And I'm like, uh, I'm asking, sp- "I speak English, mate." He went, "Oh," and he went to English. He went, I-, "I follow your Spanish channel uh, on YouTube." He said, "You don't speak any Spanish." I was like, "No, mate." Went, oh, I thought you did. I mean, you can tell it's not dream. me. Sp- <laughs> you can you can tell it's not me speaking, but yeah. was, it's for some reason he thought I would speak. Well, whoever's doing it's clearly doing a fucking great job. Great then. job, mm-hmm. great, great job, job I. Right? Shit, because uh, so it must be kind of like lip syncing kind of thing. Like it must be a little bit to match you, it up. Must be you, quite hard. You can still tell like, it's not yeah. me. But the Spanish channels blue. I've got like six hundred and fifty thousand subscribers and getting like three or four million views a month That's on mad. just on that one. That's mad. Uh, What's the most challenging part of doing what you're doing then? I think it's you know like anything. The, when you continue con- doing the same thing over and over and over again, it, it gets a little bit like oh, I've got to do this now. It gets a little bit of a little bit of a chore. Like now, yeah, my videos have got to the point now where the I've got to really put thought into them. When yeah. I first start doing them, I just fucking blag it, and like, it yeah. like on the every bag. But now I've yeah. got to put thought into them, make sure uh, I like script a bit of it out, and yeah. making sure we've got bullet points and all that. Yeah. And it's a little bit more anymore. work now, so there's a more procrastination. Yeah, like, and I procrastinate have over to do a bit it. getting in front of the camera. I'm like fuck. Got are you having the camera yourself? Like, are you? You've got the you. You're doing all of that, aren't you? Well, yeah. In LA, I mean, studio, so I would just press record. And yeah, because I, I have a bit of a bonus in that they're really busy yeah. and they're like they have to they put the time in my schedule because I would do exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Like now, Paul, you need to do it now. Yeah, because we've only got this time to record the video. And if you want it by then, you have to do it now. Yeah. So yeah. it's a. It, I've got a bit do of. It's a bit of accountability. A bit well. Oh, of course, I. Yeah. yeah. Of course. I think that's a massive benefit to having a team here because you're. Yeah. Like you can't fuck around. It's a high level of accountability, you know. Yeah, that's really. Because if they good. they can see what's in my schedule, mm-hmm. and then they'll be like, "Have you done it yet?" And I can't be the boss that's saying, "No, I haven't yeah. done it." See, I can't do that. To him, he takes no notice. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't work. You need like a team. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, you do. Like they're pushing you because it, it does. It gets it gets hard. Even sitting down doing podcasts for your art when you're doing them as many as you are, and you've got to try and think about well, will this content work or will this go out. When when we're doing what we're doing, and you kind of we do need views, yeah, we do need views, we do need interaction, we do need. We can't make a fucking boring video. We can't put boring videos out. No. Like people's not going to watch other stuff. No, and the ones that I think are brilliant are the ones that other people find boring. It doesn't yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen yeah, before. I've done, I've done yeah. videos. I've put so much time and energy into uh, them, and thinking this video is a banger. It's going to blow up. It's really going to blow up. 
and then you post it and it does shite. Ah, it's and mad, isn't it? You put a video up that you think it's going to do shite and then it's Aye. blown up and you're Aye. like, what? Wait, some of your videos, I'm sure you don't even say anything. Sometimes you just go, that's mental. And yeah. then itit stops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Some like them, their yeah. reaction videos. What does me in because I, I do some daft reaction ones. Aye. Don't even hardly speak on them. Aye. And they get like it's so many views and Aye. I do put loads of effort in it. It's like, it's not real education. No. I don't think. And yeah. I want to really educate people. Yeah. So I'm like, do I do I bite the bullet and just do all of these shitty ones? Yeah. But they get views. So Sarah, for you, what's the most challenging part about what you're doing now? Um, oh, it's all brand new to me. It seems like you know I've been doing it maybe three years coming up now. Yeah, is that what it is? But it's um, you've got a, yeah. she's got the swinging mic, haven't you? You got the <laughs> swinger. <laughs> it's all um, right. it's it is challenging for me because I'm still trying to get my following it's still really new to yeah, me yeah i'm still sometimes stuck in their mind set like oh i missed the hospital i missed the like mm. the madness of the er yeah but still you know getting away from that but yeah it's um i have good support yeah. like you know getting into that entre entrepreneurial yeah. spirit which I I've thought, never you know what i thought you were gonna to. say <laughs> i thought you were gonna say the hardest part about what you do is putting up with tony <laughs> no because that's no. probably what my wife would say, putting up with him and his ideas and all his mad shit. No, he's really good. Like I would I'd be in I'd still be in the in the ER, I think. Yeah. yeah. Like I so would be. With with that, when we were talking about being Sarah out of the hospital, yeah. I was like, you know, you you right now you're working your ass off doing 40, 50 hours a week. Yeah. Making someone else rich because I was there. The hospital is is a business, yeah. and here she, the fucking whole things. But fucked, I wasn't it? thinking yeah. about she, that. She was I'm doing because she like loves that. helping people. Yeah, yeah. Over here, you don't go into nursing if you want to make money. You go into it because you care about helping people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But That's I was like, you can have a different. bigger impact helping people online by if you can help millions of people a right. month with yeah. your education videos yeah. so you're having the impact now we're making more money yeah. and we're free to be anywhere yeah. in the world Yeah, and that's you know? why I've got a really I want to put more videos out about yeah. mental health yeah. so I've got a lot of experience and I've seen a lot of mad stuff and you're dealing with people first hand isn't it yeah, yeah. Um, and it's still a massive stigma so that's what I want to aim to go towards oh, so talking like, about content let me ask you this because I do this when you're sitting there right now and, and we're talking are yeah. you thinking about what can you see for a clip that S will a little bit a little yeah. bit, mm -hmm. but I've been in, I've been on podcasts where the, it's kind of too prepared, where it's like, that question's not linked <laughs> to that. Like, yeah. it's not really a conversation. Yeah. You're just asking me loads of really short questions that, and it's, I don't feel like I'm talking to you. I feel like you just, no, you may as well st be stood behind the camera. Yeah. The guy that's interviewing me. No, no, I get that. I did yeah. a podcast uh, the other week and it was filmed and I was like, while I was talking, I was trying to answer questions in ways to get clips yeah. that will go viral. I'll be yeah. posting Instagram and they'll do really well. Yeah. So I, that's all I'm really thinking about. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck, I should have said that. So I was just thinking, I wonder if, if you're the same and trying to think about that. When a little in, bit, a little bit. But I think if you if you, if I ask the right question and you're going to come up with an answer, that's clippable anyway. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So if I ask a great question, like something about challenge, you're going to give me a great answer and then you've got a great clip and so on. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting old thing. So, um, next this year, you mentioned Costa Rica. Where else? Uh, I'm you go back to Thailand. We'll definitely go back to Thailand. Because Thailand's massive, definitely. isn't it? Yeah. It's massive. I've been to Phuket three times and I feel like that's massive yeah. but it's actually a tiny little bit of the whole country yeah there's so, so many places more in Thailand where we want to go like, like Chiang Mai are you trying to team up then because you mentioned Rotterdam before are you trying to like mix up like travelling somewhere and getting work there while you're there yeah, yeah. so yeah. my my goal like I said my mission is to help people with boxing and I can do that now with our licensing company where yeah. we've got these programmed box and burn classes that we can put into any gym in the yeah. world yeah. it's a turnkey solution for adding boxing in. So if you're a gym in South Shields or in South of Thailand and you mm -hmm. want to add boxing, we can give you everything you need to be able to add these to your location yeah. successfully. Uh, so when I'm a rep in the world, um, I want to meet business owners that want to have this into their gym. Mm -hmm. So we can do that as well. Yeah. Is that a good clip that you just thought of? Exactly. Yeah. I was thinking <laughs> that while I was talking. Like, I'm going <laughs> to use this. I'm use this. So yeah, yeah we, we, I'm, I'm commentating on a huge... YouTube boxing match in April in in Florida, the Creator Clash, and so we need to be over that side of the world. That's why yeah. we went to Costa Rica. Yeah. Otherwise, ah, okay. Otherwise, I would have just oh, went straight back to Thailand. Malaysia, really? Would you? Yeah. 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 Or Malaysia, want to go there as well? In uh, you've been in you must have been in Miami a bunch of times, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Because we went, uh, we did Florida, we did obviously Orlando, mm -hmm. 
And then we went, oh, no, you train with Krebs in Miami, didn't yeah, you? That's yeah. what I did. Right, yeah. So I've known Krebs a long time, but I've never actually trained jiu-jitsu with him. How right, mad is that? Yeah. I've known him 10 years, maybe. And I'd only trained jiu-jitsu. That was the first time I trained jiu-jitsu with him last February. Right. So we went Orlando, and then we went to Miami. And then Puerto Rico's not far from there either. Yeah. Uh, so we were actually going to go to Miami uh, next week as yeah. well. After, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, after... after Rotterdam, but yeah. now we think maybe we'll go. It's to, expensive uh, as fuck, Miami as well, though, it isn't is. it? It's uh. expensive, but it's fucking. It's Chief Ferrugia's moved there, Annie. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I, I knew all of them through yeah. you. It's mad, like, isn't it? Directly, I think. Well, when you said Seattle, was that Luca Hosevar's gym? Yeah. So uh. my licensing classes are now in Lucas' gym as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've been there, but I know them through you because I think I don't know how, but yeah. to the gym one time. They'll have been on me podcasts. Jay's definitely been on my podcast. Well, you did a thing. Neil have been on. You did a thing with Steve Krebs and yeah. Luger, I think. Yeah. Uh, Garrett White or something? Oh, Garrett White. I wake up warrior thing. You did that thing with them. Uh, in Laguna. Like in Laguna right, Beach, yeah. I. No, I knew them before that. I dragged them on it. Oh, really? I knew them before that. I. Yeah. Uh, do you know what Alex Holmosey is? Oh, I. I've well, so he's um, the guy that he quotes, which I love this quote, which is creating an offer so good that people feel stupid saying no. The guy that he quotes in there, Travis, um, I met them through Travis, the guy that he's talking about there, and the, we were at his wedding, and Krebsy, he's just, he was having loads of problems with his anxi with anxiety, so his face was red, his skin was red and that, and I said, mate, I was fucking five stone overweight, and bipolar, so, so I was diagnosed bipolar, so my moods are up and down, I said, mate, I've signed up for this course, and I was telling him about it, and he's like, I'm coming. And the next thing I know, I'm in Laguna Beach punching me mate in the face. Because the first <laughs> thing they make you do on this so course is fight, fight, I. I wow. thought it was like a 10 minute fight. And the guy was like, oh, actually, it was only, he was only fighting for 90 seconds. I never had a fight <laughs> then. And it wow. felt like the longest fucking yeah. 90 seconds of my life. And then that got me into boxing. And then obviously that led to jujitsu. Yeah. With the, yeah, do you still get your anxiety and depression? I would. If I, I was I actually just noted this on my notes on my phone after I trained jujitsu. I was like, there's my next video. I remember I did a, when I did that book, when I finished it, the producer was like, um, Paul, do you think you'd ever end up back on the cliffs? And I'm like, I, if I went back to doing what I did before. Which was the drinking drugs. The drinking and the drugs and the not looking after my body and the not taking care of my mental negative. health and the habits and that, do you know what I mean? If I went back to that and stopped doing what I'm doing now, I, anxiety might creep up every now and again, but for me, it never happens by accident. How do you pull it out? How do you get it out of your head once you start getting, going down that? It's mad. It's mad this, right? I learned a, a, a technique called diversion, which is basically I distract myself because I can't have an anxious thought whilst doing something else at the same time. How would you distract yourself? So for example, if I know that I'm on a flight, flying used to be horrendous. So I've been, mate, I've been sedated on a flight before. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, I was going to Krebs' wedding and it was in upstate New York, uh, Syracuse. So I had to fly from here to Heathrow and then Heathrow to uh, Chicago, Chicago, right? And I, and I flew, halfway through that flight, I'd watch Molly and me. And then I'm like, shit, I need to, I was crying. I might have been crying. I was crying. I was like, oh, I need to speak to the kids. I was like, I was, and I, all I could think about was the kids. I wonder what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're probably asking where I am. And then I was like, I went to call them. I was like, fucking hell, I'm near the moon. There's no chances <laughs> of reception here. <laughs> right? so, and then I just started losing my shit. I had to get sedated on that flight. Wow. So I know, I was like, right, I need to do something about this. It had happened before. It happened on a few other flights where I had these, I, I created these really bad panic attacks where I was like fucking on oxygen and that, which apparently makes it worse. God. So I was like, oh, there's some oxygen for you. And it made it worse because I got really fucking energized then, right? And uh, so I learned this technique called diversion. So basically when I'm on, a, if I know I'm going to be on a flight, I know that I may create some kind of anxiety when I think I'm stuck on this flight and I can't do anything. So what I have now is just shit that I do. It might be watch a movie, it might be read a book, it might be do some work, do some writing, it might be watch a jujitsu instructional. And then by the time I've done all of that, sometimes I don't even do any of it. Right. But if I start to get a little bit anxious or create a little bit of anxiety, I just go and put my mind somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Not even kidding, it's like distraction. Wow. Do you recognize your own signs? Oh, straight away, I, I'll start doing. getting, I'll start sweating, Barbie freezing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, shit. And it's always when it's weird when my mind is looking for a problem. So if I'm doing this over here, no shade. When I'm on a flight, sometimes I just play, remember football manager? Yeah. I play that. Mm -hmm. Only on a flight. I never play it at home because I'm a 43 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm on a flight, I'm like, I can't manage Sunderland and 
be anxious at the same right, time. Yeah. Even if they're losing. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like I just can't have that. And it's um. So do you get it through? Is it just when you fly, or do you get it like through the day and through work and all that? Or, or? Sometimes, <laughs> never really get it through work because I remember going to this retreat. <laughs> this is mad. I went on a retreat. Right, the retreat was really expensive, and they sent me before I went. I'm like, watch these DVDs. Remember them DVDs? Yeah. My kids were like, Dad, what's that? <laughs> what are they? DVDs. <laughs> I t- <laughs> Dad, what's this? <laughs> why is it got a? Why is the mirror got a hole in it? <laughs> so the. Uh, I got these DVDs and the DVD, the first thing it said, it blew me head off this. They were like, the guy was like, the first thing you need to do when you talk like this is stop reading about anxiety, stop Googling the symptoms of anxiety, stop researching anxiety, stop talking about anxiety. This is mad. Stop thinking about anxiety. That was obviously the bit where I was like, but the other bits made sense. Mm -hmm. It It made sense. And then I was like, oh, well, I, if I've stopped reading about it and thinking about it, it's not in front of my head. Like, and it's funny, this is totally off topic, when they see, you know when they talk about mental health in schools? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, they never did that when I was at school. I don't know if it was a bad thing or not. I'm like, well, surely if I'm bringing it to people's attention all the time, yeah. is it? Oh, right, I know what Do you know saying. what I mean? Is it yeah. where my attention goes, like where I place, I, I love this saying, it's where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Right. So I'm like, if I'm not thinking about it, like, does that mean it doesn't happen? Yeah. So that's my, my whole thing. It doesn't really pop up through the day. Every now and again, it'll rear its head, but it's actually... It tends to be when I'm not looking after my physical health as well. Right. Yeah. I find that very closely linked. So with you, very closely linked. You're yeah. really high energy and mm-hmm. uh, you're always seem. I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I was, but then I started spending time with it. With my friend, the comedian Russell Kane. I spend time with him. He's he's fucking forty nine. He looks about twenty three, and he makes my energy embarrassing. Really unbelievable. Yeah. I know another Kane who's also like that. Yeah, I'll do you. Cool Kane. Yeah, cool Kane. Because that is high energy. Yeah. So you know you've got, you've seem to have high energy, yeah. and I know you talk about bipolar. So you yeah. think like he's got all oh, that high energy, and he's always yeah. talking with enthusiasm and all yeah. that. And then do you sometimes just like fucking hit like rock bottom, but like not anymore? What you saying? Like, do you still get depressed? Do you still feel I get down? tired? Mm-hmm. I get tired. Like if, I don't ma- I, if I don't manage my energy properly, then that can happen. The worst time it happens, you know, Tony, is if I've done like a big speaking gig, I've got one this Saturday, because that's a big high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like being on a stage in front of hundreds or even thousands of people, that's like your fucking superstar. Mm. I'm sure you've had it after a fight, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd have a fight, you'd, you'd get your hand raised, everyone would be f- like sucking you off on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> everyone would be buzzing for you and you'll feel like the king of the world. And then you just go back home. Yeah, right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. was my worst one. So I just manage that better. Yeah. I just make sure that I'm always doing things that I love and I'm never that bored. Yeah. That was a hard thing about retiring, you know, because it's it's like a firework. You keep going up and down. You yeah. know, getting these highs and then lows, yes. highs and lows, highs and lows. And then it's like, I'm never going to get that feeling again because there's not a better feeling in the world than winning a fight. Mm-hmm. So I'm never going to get that feeling ever again. Uh, and that's why you're like down. So do you, how, how do you manage that? And if you know you're never going to get that feeling again, I've got to put my energy into something else, like yeah. you said, but I, I understand that I'm never going to get the feeling of getting my hand raised ever again. Yeah. There's, there's nothing that can yeah. compare, to, compare to that. I think, you know, and I, I don't know if you guys agree with this, I, I when I was rock bottom, one of the things that I noticed wasn't just that I wasn't after my physical health and that was that I didn't feel like I had a sense of purpose anymore. Like, mm-hmm. because I'd made this thing, I was like, I'm living in Marbella, I've got a four bedroom villa with a private pool, Taking home 30 grand a month, wow. working about six hours a fucking week, hot wife, two kids, lush car on that. I'm from South Shields, but I kind of stopped. I was like, is this it? Mm-hmm. This, And then I stopped yeah. doing it. And then I was like, I realized that actually I just stopped kind of, I thought I had everything I wanted, but clearly I didn't. But then I kind of stopped. I didn't have anything to move towards anymore. I was like, is this it? And I think I spoke to Tyson Fury about this. Same guy. He's like, I will, once I was world champ, be Klitschko. Yeah. What do you no. do now? Yeah, yeah I've got tough. all this money. I'm driving a fucking Ferrari, and he was going to drive it off a bridge. Yeah, right. I've got this Ferrari. Well, what the fuck do I do now? Mm-hmm. Well, that's why I think when he stops fighting, it'll be challenging for Tyson when yeah. he stops fighting. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Like, I'm like, yeah. every time he sees he's going to retire, I was like, he's not fucking. Retire. He's a fighting man. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Why the? I'm going to use bad language here. Why the fuck did you move back to South Shields from Marbella? Well, <laughs> I was almost forced to because you think about this. My wife's got a newborn. Two year old and right. a fucking a new one there. and me, thirty four year old baby. <laughs> Not even kidding, I was like a baby. She didn't know anyone, she didn't have any support. Yeah. And in Spain, you know, so I had a private daughter there, he's like, We don't really treat bipolar here. 
It's not really a thing. Wow. Wow. Isn't that interesting? It's not really a thing. So my wife, I was like, we need to go home. Yeah. And it, it, like I say, it got worse at first, but now it's weird. I fucking love living here. Really? I couldn't, I don't think I'd move again. Right. The house I'm in now, sea view and that, I love living here. I'm in touch with all my old friends. I love training here. I love this office space. Yeah, the yeah. office is great. I have the ability to travel if I want to, but it's, it's really strange. And I think yeah. the problem wasn't South Shields. The problem was me. Like, I'd be like, oh, everyone's negative and everyone's this and everyone's fucking, no one's doing this and no one's, and I'm like, well, I'm not. I was the common denominator, so I just took. It's weird. I took the same version of me to fucking Marbella. It was just me in a different country. Right. I was doing the same shit, but in a different country. Yeah. You, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Now I love living here. So, uh, like, the, the support of your family and friends, especially without having the kids, that was one of the big things. I definitely, with yeah. the kids, I, I yeah. and you, have, you guys found that this time you've came home because you've never been home this long for a, Quite a while, isn't it? We were yeah. lucky because my mum and dad, they retired and they, my brothers live in Australia. They moved, started a business there. Yeah. Don't have any grandparents. So yeah. my mum and dad moved as soon as I had the little one. Yeah. They moved with us and they yeah. were amazing. Yeah. So we had that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Support yeah. With us. And that's a big thing. Massive eye. Mm -hmm. Massive that's a big eye. thing that Sarah, when we're talking about the worries about doing the traveling around the world, is yeah. like we not have that support. So yeah. Sarah's going to be with the kids like most most days and and, yeah. and working with them, which it can be a lot for, for aye. a woman. Can yeah. I? And it can be a bit lonely for a woman as well, I bet. Yeah, aye. Definitely. Yeah. Aye. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's a bit of a worry, but again, we're just going to give, give it a try. What's the deal with them? What's it? This is such a random question, but I've been mean to ask it for ages. What's the deal then? What made you start Jiu Jitsu? I can't finish your pot. I try and get everyone talking about Jiu Jitsu oh, before I get it. I'm, I'm obsessed with trying to get people into Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> you? Sure, do you know what I feel? Every time I talk about it, I feel like one of them fucking vegan CrossFitters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know, like, how do you know they're vegan CrossFitters? Because they tell you as soon as you start fucking yeah. talking to you. Yeah. That's what I feel like. I feel like that with the no booze thing as well, which I'd like to touch on as well. Yeah. But Jiu Jitsu. So, ju Jiu Jitsu, it's something that I've always fancied. I used to train Brendan Sharp when he was in the UFC for his yeah, last yeah, few yeah. fights. And uh, Henna Gracie was. Uh, his other coach, right. so I got close with Henry, and I, I tried it back then, but it was, it wasn't as good back then. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I always fancied it. I really. How did. long ago was that, Tony? That was, uh, I think, in two thousand and fourteen when he had his last his last fight. Oh shit! Um, and then we looked for. I was looking for somewhere for the kids. So I always wanted the kids to do it. And yeah. in March last year, we found a place called ZR Gym in mm -hmm. Woodland Hills, and mm -hmm. we took them there and. I was sitting watching them. I was thinking, oh, I want to have a go. I have a go. <laughs> and I'm sponsored by a company called Sanibel who have got, um, they do jujitsu gear, mm -hmm. they do boxing gloves as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to them. Is that the company you were telling me about with the Amazon? The Amazon, big yeah. massive company on Amazon yeah. that I'd never heard of. Yes. And you were like, you told us the numbers. I was like, fuck me. Yeah, the yeah. number one selling boxing glove on, on Amazon. They're doing all the jujitsu stuff as well. And the owner of that, Imran, I sat with him and we were talking for about an hour about jujitsu and he was telling us about how much it helps him and how much how great it is. Yeah. He, he rolls with uh, Ashton Kutcher all the time. Oh, really? So he does it as well. Aye, aye. And then in our gym in Los Angeles, we've got uh, a girl there called Joanne Doyle. She's from um, Bradford. Mm. She's uh, MMA world uh, European champion. Right. Anyway, her and her boyfriend, her and her husband, James, they were telling us all about jujitsu. You should try it. And the yeah. kids were doing it. It was just, everything was aligning. Like, <laughs> That's happened to me. I'm going to do it. Aye. I'm going to do it. And I did it. And I got battered. The gym that we went to, I guess it's the same gyms as you Great with battered without getting punched. Exactly, mate. Yeah. And it's competitive <laughs> and you can give 100%. You can spar every day. Every day, give 100% and try your hardest. Yeah. And you're not getting hurt. Uh, if you, you needed to work right out. Problem. You knew you needed to work out. You're sick of boxing, not going to do that again. Yeah. You sick of hitting pads. Something. Yeah. 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 Hated exercising. Didn't like, didn't like don't lifting don't weights don't and like that. Don't like exercising. Don't like running. Don't like anything. But with this, <laughs> I'm like, this I bet is... you don't miss running oh, after man. all your boxing. <laughs> I bet he did miss that. It's fucking boring. <laughs> and I'm doing this and I'm like, this is great. And then I remember one of the first times, and I'm not that you can relate to this. I yeah. see this this kid, he's about 17, 18. Fucking little, nerd. Little, little blue belt. Nerd, little spotty face kid. And I'm like, <laughs> skinny, tiny. I'm like, I'll have him. I'll have him. <laughs> I'm spotting <laughs> blue belt and all that. Mid. Uh, the 20 seconds later, I'm tied and not fucking uh, tap on it's mad, it. Isn't it? And it's mad. And I'm like, wow, this is this is this is an unbelievable list. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> and uh yeah, and now I'm like telling everyone you've got to do it. Uh, and my friend James Doyle, who's um, whose wife's the European champion, mm -hmm. he told me this, and I always think about. It, he's like, you know, jujitsu. He says it's the secret source of life. I'm like, I can see that. It's the secret source. And when you see now the people who's doing it, like the likes of Mark Zuckerberg, who looks like the biggest nerd in the world, he's now, Tom Hardy's with, fucking bossing it. 
Tom Hardy. I was meant to compete against him in the semi, wasn't I? Didn't oh. fucking drop his ass. <laughs> 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 Chop his ass, didn't you, Tom? <laughs> Chop his ass. Oh, yeah. To be fair, like you would have fucking butchered us. I've I, seen him. I've heard he's like purple belt level. It might uh, be you tell us that. Uh, my friend said belt. he's probably a purple belt. Uh, he's still the blue belt. Uh, I think he trains all over the place, so don't he? He'll be like you. Yeah. Like, you're in a regular gym all the time. The coach is going to see you getting better. Yeah. But if you're in, that, that'll be one of the problems that you have when you're traveling and going to different gyms all the time. Yeah. Who's going to give you your next belt up? But I think that's good because right now I'm like, I don't mind being a white belt. Tax the pressure off a little ah, bit. No as soon as you get that, on your back, as soon as you get that blue belt, it's ah, like, oh no, I'm your expectations wipe. of yourself start to go up, and it's become it's like a different mental battle as well. Right. You're like, well, I'm better now, I know more, so if I'm better, I have to do better. And then when you don't do better, you're like, what the fuck's? Because you haven't got the oh, my white belt is fine thing anymore. It's a really, yeah, yeah. it's a different head fuck. So what people see in jujitsu is the biggest drop off is when people make a blue belt, and then yeah. they just feel like leaving. quit. I. When you got your blue belt. I felt like that last Thursday. Quitting I. Why? I'm fucking five kilos heavier. Just come back off holiday. Hadn't trained since I seen you last time. Right. It's like the 17th of December summit. So that's like almost, that's over a month no training. I got back and it was it was like leg locks and inverting and doing fucking rolls on your back and that. And I'm like, I couldn't do it. I was like, I, my body's not moving properly. I'm fucking, this was me. This is how I summed it up. Leslie said, how was training? I said, I'm unfit, I'm fat, and I'm shit at jujitsu. <laughs> that was me. I had a little huff. Unfit, fat, shit Spied at jujitsu. And it's mad. Two days later, I went to a seminar. I was like, actually, sorry, this yeah. is fine. Yeah. It's fine. I was just doing something that I'd never done before. I hadn't trained at all for ages. And I'd put fucking five kilos on over Christmas. Do you know what I mean? But when you got your blue belt, did you feel like quitting? Were you I like, told me oh. peck about two months later. Oh, did you? So I, so I had this concept of I told me peck. I had about nine months off. Then I had my blue belt on. And I went to a new gym where the standard oh, gym. is yeah. fucking high. Yeah. And I got, I felt like a white belt all over again because I hadn't trained for nine months. I'm in a brand new gym where they're much better. I'm in the gi, which I hardly ever trained in anyway. I still don't. And I got butchered. But I think it's good that, it's good. that's what I love about it so yeah. much. You're going to get, you have to get, it's almost like you have to get okay with getting fucked up. Yeah. And you're, it crosses over into so many areas yeah. of your life. You've got actually, it didn't take, I don't take, Winning and losing that seriously anymore in business either, or uh, so and I win went more that way. Yeah, Aye. yeah, and that, that, that's that's the thing. Straight away when I went in, I'm like, I, I can't lose, I can't tap, I can't, and you, and you get that mentality. But I mean, you soon tap, and then you do. Huh? Yeah, you soon <laughs> tap, and you, so you get used to not losing. You call, I call it learning. You, yeah, you, yeah. You're not losing if you're learning. So yeah. You got to learn about it, yeah. and that's one of the great things about it. Which it is drops massive your ego. for you because you were so competitive with so everything. Ridiculous with yeah. everything. Yeah. And I've just go in there and I'll like be looking at everybody, think I'm gonna win you. I'm gonna absolutely destroy well, you. Know you. the mad part, Tony, is is in jujitsu, nogi. You don't know what bell people are. Oh no! So it's even worse. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're literally judging a book by its cover. Right. I remember one lad. I was like, I'll beat this fat cunt. <laughs> He's fat him. He must be shit. And it was a, it was a fucking brown belt, and he absolutely mullered us. <laughs> Made us feel like, do you know, when you see a kid getting put in the car seat by the dad. <laughs> That's what I felt like. I felt like he was putting us in me fucking car seat. Do you know what I mean? Do you know when they do like the stiff kid thing where yeah. they go like that? So you can't get them in. Yeah. I felt scared like that. Honestly, I felt like I was getting filled. Honestly, I felt like I was getting put in the back of a car seat by my dad all over again. That's quality. So, so when are you starting? I've already started. I've got an injury. Oh, have you? My yeah. wife started. She, she started. I. She did an eight-week beginners course, but she was she couldn't get into it. Class. She enjoyed oh, it, really? but it's traveling half an hour. Yeah. The classes that she was going to were like half I seven. Could, at I night really and couldn't say no. Uh, so we've got him, and then the three girls. Go on, mum. It's like I can't say can no. It, nah. So I just went for it, and I really enjoyed did it. Did you? I loved she really it. enjoyed it. But the, the, the gym that we go to, the the sport hard, and then when it's a white belt with another white belt, like the women, they were spawned too hard. It's me, and, it's me and all the mums. Like, is it? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, class! And then a, a, a lady like kind of fell and hurt hurt her shoulder. She's I like, heard Aye. a crack. So oh, really? It's like shit. You do pick up bits and pieces like in yeah. the because the I think one of the challenges with it is the movements are so random. Like then it, there's no pattern is that really? Yeah. Do you know boxing there's kind of a pattern? Yeah. There's right, kind of a pattern. It's a bit of a dance in it. Yeah. It's a bit of a dance. You, you get in it. There's talk about rhythm. Do you do too? There isn't really a rhythm. Right. It's uh, there's so many random movements. There's so many ways to get hurt. There is. There's, there's the, but, right, well, the for random. some reason you don't. But the random movements, you're right. And I often think when I'm rolling and sparring, I'm at, in jujitsu, I'm thinking, I've never been in this position before. I've never been in this position before. <laughs> and I'm in there with like someone like Ellis. I'm like, I wonder if he's been in this position before because this is a really, really weird, weird <laughs> position. And I remember we, we so we, we had Ellis that, is like a Spider Man. 
Oh, mate, I, so I did this video with him. Uh, you know, I went and shot a video with him. It was like... Um, I've seen that you did it, but I haven't actually... I was away when you did it. The I video has not been published yet. It's oh, has it not? It's just getting edited. And it's like, <clears throat> I want... Because I've got to make videos a, a hook and try and keep people into the end of the video. Yes. That's what that's what makes them... Uh, yeah. What makes them uh, successful? If you someone watches the beginning from the first from the first second to the last second, that's what makes them. So my goal with the videos, this is anyone out there is creating content. Yeah, you've got to try and keep someone on the video. So the way I did it with this, I was like, "All right, Alice, I'm gonna bet you. I bet that I can submit you when we spot the end of this <laughs> one time. Hell. And I bet you can't submit me five times. If if you submit me five times, I'll go and get in that North Sea right now. Oh shit! So did this, it? Is, this, oh. this is the video. So he had to submit me five times in the spot. And that's what it did. And now are you thinking if it, now I'm he, just thinking, did he submit him? In fact, I'm not even thinking because I know for a fact he did. <laughs> he probably didn't even pass his guard. He probably didn't even pass his guard. You know, Ellis is the first English guy to medal at the Worlds. Really? And that wow. was, he's wow. like 25. A, a black belt, sorry. Not ever, wow. but a black belt. Wow. And he's like 25. Yeah. Isn't that yeah, man I mean, from Washington? Yeah, I, mean, I think it was eight times. <laughs> was it? <laughs> but, and he was taking his time as well. And did he, was there any like, Foot locks or leg locks or no, anything. I, I, oh, really? There was no foot locks so either. Imagine before, how many times you could submit you if you could. I said to him before. I said. I said. I heard the thing with no gi is yeah. foot locks. You can get injured with that stuff. So yeah. I'm, I was worried about that. Yeah. So on purposely, he didn't. He thought I might do that. So he's, he's actually like, neglected yeah. half of your body. That's what they say. You neglect <laughs> half of your body, and he still. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. And how fast he was. It was. It was great. It Aye. was very humbling. It's and mad. It was, uh, but he did it in a way where every time he submitted us, it was. It wasn't fast, where you know when yeah, he didn't slam it on. Yeah, didn't so slam he took it on. His time. Uh, he was just so like, just, "When are you going to tap, Tony?" Yeah, Looking at, if what I love sometimes when someone they kind of sub you and they just look at you. <laughs> are you going to tap, mate, or what? And then they'll tighten it a little bit more and they'll keep looking at you like that in your eyes. Yeah. Going to tap or what, mate? <laughs> and I'll be like, uh, you "Going to tap or what, yeah. mate?" And then the, Would you recommend jujitsu for everyone? Ah, oh, without a shadow of a doubt, I didn't even care how old you are. Yeah, I started yeah. when I was thirty-nine, maybe. Right. 39 I started so I don't think I mean you've seen people Joe Rogan shares women that are like getting their black belts at like 72 years old and yeah. that Amazing. it's unbelievable Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. unbelievable I'd recommend it to anybody um, especially anybody that's like even I'd especially recommend it to people who suffer with anxiety right in that mad thing to recommend that because when you're there you can't be anywhere else you can't be anywhere you else you have to get over that fear of getting in mm hmm over the fear of getting in, so over the anxiety about people looking at you, but then you quickly realise no one's looking at me. Yeah. Because yeah. they're doing their own thing. Yeah, they're, they're battling all focused on, the, on themselves. Nah, they're battling on their own shit. That that literally battling their own shit. Yeah. They're not watching me. Nobody wants us to lose. Yeah. You are completely present in the moment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing there's nothing like it, I guess, other than boxing, sparring, by or, or, I mean, even when you, I think boxing's really similar. Like, even when you're hitting the pads, yeah. you're you're totally present. Yes, you've got so much to think about yeah. with your breathing, your form, your technique, bringing your hands up, turning your hips. Yeah, there's just so much. And then jujitsu is the same. You're like, how can I not get choked off this fella? Yeah. Or how can he not snap me on? I mean, they're not going to snap you on, but how can they not? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I would argue with that. But I, th I think when you're training with people who, who the right type of people, yeah, you're not going to get hurt. No, nah. you know nah. you're not. And that's a big worry about people who, oh, I'm not going to go and I'm still get say, injured. No, just yeah. just go and go yeah. find the right gym and it'll be good for you. you. You kind of, if you have got little injuries and that, you can kind of adapt what you're doing a little bit as yeah. well in jiu -jitsu, you know what I mean? Like my injury is I've had a tear, I've tore, I've had a bucket handle tear of me, right knee, the, the meniscus, and I tore me pec. Oh, you pack, yeah. So I, I don't do much wrestling and that anymore. Right. And to me, I'm fucking 43. I'm going to have tired old yeah, joints and that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Tired old joints. Neither have me big toes bend properly. <laughs> so when they're talking about double legs, I'm like, mate, that toe doesn't bend at all. <laughs> broke it. I broke it like a thousand times. It doesn't bend. So that you just kind of adapt though, don't you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I would recommend you to, to everyone. What about no boozing? We'll finish on this topic because yes. I haven't been talking about it much because it's just not. Did you hit the booze again? I, no, no. You I'm on, I think I'm on 400 days tomorrow. So I'm still off it. Yes. I'm still off it. But we it just, were texting. I thought he's 100% well, well, going to No, get no. Right. 24th. Once I was over that 24th, not 23rd yeah. of December, I was like, what's the point? But it doesn't feel like a thing anymore. So I haven't been talking That's about great, it. Mate. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. when I was on the year, I was doing the countdown and people were asking me about it. Now people are like, you still have the booze. See? You yeah, didn't even know. Yeah, that's great. Because it doesn't feel like it's a thing anymore. It's just, I didn't drink. Because you were saying to me, I might get on it tomorrow. I might uh, not. I might. Uh, I remember. You didn't. So uh, I'm really glad that you didn't. Uh, so what made you decide so not to drink anymore then? I'm 
big on brain health. You know, Paul, I've done the maths. I've been punched in the head between 30 and 50,000 times throughout my career. You know he's supposed to move your head, right? <laughs> that, <laughs> that's with, that's with moving the head. <laughs> even if you Blocking get, punches with your head, mate, that happens. Even if you block a punch with your hand, it's still a different It is, isn't it? So I've, I've been punched this, obviously it's took an effect on my brain. Yeah. I would be punched drunk if I thought it hasn't affected us at all. Yeah. So drinking- Do you worry about that comment there? Like affecting you later on in life or not? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm doing everything I can right now to, you know, have me keep me being as sharp as possible. Like mm -hmm. I, I bought a hyperbaric chamber, uh, I bought a, a plunge pool, a, mm -hmm. a sauna, and all mm -hmm. this stuff. Always looking into ways like for brain health. Always like, or eating organic food all, all time. Like everything I'm doing. Everything. No mushrooms yet or what? Psilocybin, yeah. Are you doing it? Yeah. Have you? I'm doing it next week. Never done it. I've got a bar, I've got a bar in my house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a bar of uh, mushroom chocolate. Have you? It's just yeah. micro-dosing. Micro I'm yeah. micro-dosing now. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I'm doing a full ceremony next week and in Liverpool. Oh, I haven't done that. Aye. Uh, yeah. You have to tell us how that goes. I will lie. My me, me wife's losing her shit about it. She's like, what are you doing that for? I'm not doing it. You better not die. No, uh, it's, it's, it's... I've it's heard it's really amazing. Good, I watched yeah. that documentary on Netflix, that How to Change Your Mind mm -hmm. thing, oh, where they do the MDMA, they do MDMA, they do acid, they do There's psilocybin. so much research, like ketamine, help them for PTSD. They did ketamine, yeah, aye, it's amazing. amazing. So I'm... Well, what's, what's, the, what's the other one that I was looking at doing? Um, um, I can never remember the word. What's ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Yes, ayahuasca. Have you done that? So, nah. Would you do that? Nah. Why? That possibly it seems a bit, a bit like fucking extreme. Opening like Pandora's. Ah, uh, it seems a bit thing. extreme, and also the prospect of taking something and then vomiting for hours. Yeah, and shitting your pants and all that. Yeah. Doesn't. I think you have to be at a place in your life where you've tried everything else. And I totally agree. I else. feel like, and this is why my wife's asking about the, the psilocybin thing. I'm curious about the psilocybin. Yeah. But I feel if I was, I feel I'd do ayahuasca if I was in a dark place. Yeah. I feel like if I wanted to get out of a that's, dark that's place, that's its I would intention. Do, uh, that's yeah. what I feel like, but yeah. I'm not there. Right. The psilocybin thing, I'm just interested. This is me. Con me why are you doing it? I'm like, I just want to see what else there is. Yeah, what, it's not. Is as there more to be seen or? Yeah, it's not as extreme as nah. that. I'm ayahuasca. only going to do a little bit. I'm still. People are like, I was. They were like, how much are you going to do? I was like, probably like a gram. Yeah, like, but well, it's controlled situation. So, and, and then someone said, one of the lads at Jiu Jitsu, actually, two of the lads were like, oh, we were in Amsterdam in the same hour, we did 15 grams each in one night. <laughs> we're like, we had a fucking trip, we're tripping, like, I was like, fucking hell, I'm not surprised. You've, you've took, <laughs> you literally took, right? You're nervous about a gram. You took like a commercial sized <laughs> I'm nervous. I, I will be nervous, that'll be my biggest yeah, challenge. Yeah. So you, you've done some microdosing on that? Yeah, so I've done microdosing on that. Um, like point one of a gram or something? I, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, not, a, no. it's not. It's not labelled because it's not strictly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's just a little bit where you get a little bit of a like. Yeah. A, a, a I don't feeling. feel anything, me. Yeah. Nah. But then when I stop doing it, it's every third day or something I'm doing it. Right. When I stop doing it, I was like, oh, I don't feel as sharp as I did before. Right. Yeah. yeah that's it. You're not uh, supposed to feel I, it. I, I just take, I, when I take a little, I take a little bit more than a micro dose. Yeah. Like uh, the other week, I was. Uh, I ordered some. I got some sent from America. Took. I took a. Uh, Three squares. You're supposed yeah. to take two squares. Yeah. And I fucking forgot I took it. And I'm I'm in this shop in uh, oh in Sunderland, and I'm talking to the shopkeeper. He's talking to us, and I'm I'm th thinking, why? What's he saying? I'm not even listening to me. And I'm thinking, yeah. I, I forgot that I took that. I'm thinking, oh god, uh, you still smiling at him? I'm, uh, I'm smiling. <laughs> I think I think I'm thinking, have I got uh, have I got CTE? CTE, CTE, kicking him right now. What's CTE? Think, like. Uh, I don't know the word of it. Punch drunk. I've got that. Oh, okay. Uh, it's me brain. Am I starting to get dementia? Yeah, 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 I yeah, think, yeah. Fuck me. I'm not even concentrating here. Yeah. This is this must be the turning point from being normal to having dementia. Oh shit. And I'm thinking that, and I'm like, what's wrong with me brain? And I'm walking down. The e I'm going down the escalator, and I'm thinking, oh, I took that, that mushroom. Now I just start laughing. <laughs> <the other. laughs> I I so, it. so before I distracted you again, yeah, uh, you're always looking at ways to improve and protect your brain. Improve my brain, and then I've got an addictive personality, and. I used to start drinking a glass of wine in the house, mm -hmm. turn to two glasses of wine before I knew it. It was a bottle of wine every night. And then mm -hmm. I thought I needed this to sleep yeah. better and all that. And we got comfortable. I start, when I'm drinking a bottle of wine, I'm having a pack of crisps. Yeah. I'm putting loads of weight on and yeah. all that. And then, you know, I got- I'm buzzing that you still say the word crisps and you're not calling them chips yet. Chips. I call um, them that. We'll call, very call, call, call them, them chips, man. I'm like, you don't. You're really? Are you from, oh, she's just using all the American terms. Wow. Like, it's just I. <laughs> yeah. call, apparently there's something called hot chips. What are they? Really? I don't know. What hot are. chips, maybe roasties. I, I don't know. I don't know what the Oshers are. Damn, I'm going to have some hot chips. I'm like, what are they? Yeah, the uh, girls call them chips. I do yeah. they? Uh -huh. chips. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So I, I'm putting weight on. I'm getting fat. I'm yeah. getting the fattest I've ever been. And I'm and at the same time, I'm trying to think about my brain health. I'm like, well, this is fucking not good, is it? So I decided, end of 2019, I'm going to have a year off drink. And I had the year off drink. And 
I lost a bit of weight, but but um, that was 2020. So 2020 was the year of COVID. I was off the drink. And rather than waking up hungover or feeling rough the next day, I was waking up sharp. Yeah. And then I was going to the gym and I was shooting YouTube videos. Yeah. And then my YouTube just took off as well. And yeah. and what we're talking about with the COVID situation, business just improved. My life improved. Yeah. It was giving us more time. Yeah. And that's one thing with drink. What you get back, you get time back. Mm. Because let's just see if you have a, a drink on a Saturday night, and then Sunday you feel ill from fucking eight till twelve. Mm. You know that's uh, four hours of time, and then over the month that's. Well, mate, and I, I, I just someone asked me about it. And I was like, well, I only drink. I was only drinking every quarter, once a quarter. When five, you drank, was it a lot though? Aye, right. and then I'd, I just, I maybe drink six times a year. Maybe oh, really? Twice at Christmas, six times a year. Yeah, but. The week after, I'd be operating at like 20% of my capacity. Yeah. So over the course of the year, I was probably operating at like 80%. Right. And the reason I stopped, I was just like, I'm, my wife was like, why are you doing that? You only drink six times a year. I was like, I want to see if I can. I want to see what yeah. might change if I do. Right. So you've, you've been... So now, like, my life's the best How long, ever two been. years then? Uh, three years now. Three years, I'm shit. For three years. Business is great. Life's great. Uh, family, like the kids, is, I spend more quality time with the kids because now I'm not waking up like, oh, I can't be asked to yeah. play with the kids. Yeah. Everything's just way better, and I would never drink alcohol yeah. again. Talk to me about then. With that, then, what do you find is the biggest challenge in not boozing? I, th I think what it was. Now I'm hundred percent fine. Yeah. What it was was if I went out for a meal with Sarah, mm -hmm. and you know I'm not as fun. Yeah, I think. Does your wife still drink? Oh, that's she true. hasn't drank either for that same amount of time. Oh, wow. so she, and it wasn't I even still a goal. Do. do you? Yeah, but I never. I don't. I don't You're drink not as much. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe I will on Friday when I go out with my friends, but not too bad. Because I've always got right. just Newcastle. Wait, you'll definitely get pissed now. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I've always with. got the responsibility of being with the kids the next yeah. day, so I never go over that. I, I never, I don't have an addictive personality. I, I know when to stop. I know when I've had enough. I never knew when to stop that much. Like. And so, That's the thing. yeah, when he was saying about not being as fun, like I did go through that morning period, like, oh, I'm not going to be able to go out and have a glass of wine with him. Yes. But that's past now. Yeah. You know, and he's I actually, I'm more fun. Oh yeah, he, it's mad. He is, you know, Tony's mental anyway. So yeah. he didn't need the he didn't need the <laughs> drink. <you>. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like we still go to Vegas. We still uh, we still have a laugh. Yeah, and so you're not you don't feel like you're missing out on anything then. Oh. I think because that's a big yeah. thing for a lot of people mentally. They think they're gonna. Right. Do you still go to the pub? I'm like, well, I actually find a pub really boring. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. sitting in essentially what used to be someone's front room. That's what pubs are. And mean? when yeah. I first met him, he didn't drink, and I would oh, go out with really? my friends and oh, have a drink, and it wasn't yeah. a thing that we did together. Yeah, anyway. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah it's, it's much. Yeah, yeah it's mad. I'm better. I'm way more fun on a night out now. Right. Yeah. I stay up later, which is <laughs> mad. I get up and dance more. I'm not thinking about when I can go and get the next pint. I'm not constantly on the pisser. Right, I'm yeah. not pissing all of the time. <laughs> I honestly, now when you're like, oh, I broke the seal now. <laughs> and it's just really, it's mad. I'm more fun. Right. It's mad. Great. And then yeah, don't get that thing where you want to fucking kick off because you're pissed. Yeah. Do you know when you get yeah. that bloke thing where you're a bit pissed, you're like, well, fucking up. What are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yeah, I never did well, that. I was a happy drunk, so I didn't get that. Why? But uh, but now if I, if I do have anything, which is very rare, I will I will take an extra square of mushroom. Yeah. And that, get, that puts us in that little... Yeah, a little bit. Uh, you feel a little bit different. Yeah, good, you know? yeah. for a, for a, mi a minute, we did try um, the CBD gummies because that's legal in LA. Cannabis gummies. <laughs> what do you think of them? I'm not a fan. To be honest, I feel you know, just. Fuck I hate know. weed. I'm yeah. not a fan of weed. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, Makes us paranoid like in that. Really, we, we knew we had to try it because uh. it's legal in LA, and we thought the girls are going to try it at some point. We need to like. <laughs> Stop being old. Tell them that's any good or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, mate. So with with not drinking alcohol, I'll highly recommend it yeah. to, to to people. Yeah, so it, it gives you more life back, especially if you're drinking every weekend, and as well, like the money that you would save, like especially yeah. me, I was drinking organic. Wine, we're spending a fortune on it. Then Trying to justify that it's still okay. Yeah, it's it's ah, that's healthy. Ah, yeah. I'm going out in LA where the cocktails. Oh, are all the antioxidants and that. Yeah. Uh, where the cocktails are twenty dollars, I'm spending a few hundred on a, a night, yeah. on one night, and then now it's I, now I can I can I don't have to do that. I'm so I'm saving that money. Well, Vegas is kind of if you can go to Vegas and not get pissed. Yeah, like that's that's like me going to Wembley for that Sunderland playoff final. I didn't drink. People are like, you must be on a cave yeah. here, especially when the one mate. I'm in a Hilton with fucking remember Marco Gabbiadini. Oh, I I'm with Marco Gabbiadini and the wow. kids and that right. Yeah. And I'm like, I've I've ordered a. I've never even had a pint of uh, alcohol-free drink until May. 
Never. Like, you know, like our Aubrey Lager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had one. I was like, oh, it's all right. This. It's class. Aye. It's Never class. even. And then I got kind of into that as well. Yeah. Aye, yeah. it's a mad thing. No, it's class. I'll tell you about what happened to me in Miami with the no. CBD. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> so, I mean, when I said I went to Orlando and then to Miami, when I'm at home, I take CBD, but actual CBD gummies, right? With t- you, does it have THC no, in? Or none, is it just the CBD? No, it's just CBD. So right. kinda, you kind of get it here. Right. I mean, you probably can. But I get it from like, uh, there's a place in Sunderland. You, you must have heard of that CBD life. He must have been on you. The Sunderland company that does all right. the CBD, right? So anyway, I mean, I mean Orlando. And with that time difference, I was really struggling to sleep because it's all over the place. And uh, so I went, it was, I got through Orlando fine. And then I went to Miami. I was like, I need to get some fucking sleep here. So we're in, there's like a pier there. I can't remember what the pier is called. There's like a hard rock and that. And there's a big wheel mm-hmm. in, in down in Miami there. And then... Um, <laughs> I went, there was a CBD shop. I said, like, oh, I'll just jump in here and get some CBD. So I looked around and there was a, I found these like, like pine apple rings there were. And they were, I got the counter and they were like $80. I was like, that's quite expensive. <laughs> $80 fucking dollars. So I got them anyway and it said THC zero on the front. Clearly zero cannabis, right? Yeah. Right. So I took one and then I was like, ah, f- I may as well have another one here. So I had two. By the time I got back to the hotel... THC zero apparently is nine times stronger than weed. It's synthetic cannabis oh, made oh, from hemp. Oh, and I was off me fucking face. <laughs> I got out of the car and my legs just turned to jelly. I was like, look, my legs, my legs clearly weren't like jelly. I was saying to the kids, look, kids, my legs are turning to jelly. I'm like, dad, are you all right? And then for two hours, I just laughed. Uh, yeah. The kids thought it was amazing. I can't believe they've seen it. Yeah. Wow. Like I was a bit like, oh. Yeah, your legs go jelly. I was like, shit, man, because I don't like my... That, one of the reasons it's easy for me not to drink, and when people say, do you don't drink on holiday? I'm like, oh, I don't like drinking in front of the kids. Yeah. It's just not something that I've ever liked doing, mm-hmm. and they hate it now because they've been to boxing where fucking pissed men and grown yeah. men are kicking off, and UFC and football matches where they've seen drunk blokes acting like fucking idiots. Right. So <laughs> I'm in the scene. I'm fucking talking to seagulls and that, man. And I'm I'm calling people Harry Batman and that's him calling everyone Batman, and then my lass is going. She's going, you fucking embarrassing us. Get up to the room now, and I can't get up to the room because I'm laughing so hard I can't move. I uh, and then uh, ill next year. Oh, no, I was fine. Oh, yeah. I was fine. I, I haven't. I brought them home like, but I haven't taken another one because, like I say, every time I've had weed before that, I've, I've lost me fucking. Like I've got really paranoid. Right. Mm. Yeah. I and like felt I was felt like I was gonna die in that. Yeah. But I, I don't think there's any. Dangerous them gummies, man. Oh, they are. <laughs> but if there's, if there's any buzz I like, I've had, I've had the weed, I've had the mushrooms, mm-hmm. but I think drink's actually better. I have a better time on drink. Yeah. yeah. Really anymore. That's right. interesting. All right, it is. What else are you doing to protect your brain? Because you must be jumping in on this thing, uh-huh. right? With the brain health thing. Yeah. Is there yeah. something that you've got into? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, the sleep is a massive thing. That's why what I usually talk about on my YouTube. Sleep. Um, it's such a boring subject though, isn't it? It's so boring. Because everyone knows they have to do it. But nobody does. Nah, I, and it's mad because this year, it's always a thing for me. I'm like, my sleep's always been shit because I'm wired all mm-hmm. the time. Like, I'm, I'm, I've not, su- I wouldn't say I've survived. I usually get between five and six. Oh. And all of the research says it's not enough. No. But I feel fucking pretty good. Oh, right? No, so anyway, I've tried everything. I've take, That's why I take the CBD. I'll go to bed early. I'll take the magnesium. I'll be on the zinc. It's got a little bit better since I started the TRT. And then it's mad this year. I was like, what's the most boring thing that people say when it goes to getting to sleep? The one thing that I haven't tried, going to bed and getting up at the same time every day. I know. Right. And I know. it's helped a lot. It's because yeah. that's the most boring to get up at the same time every day. I'm fu- I've got my own business. I didn't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just get up when I want. Yeah. And then I'd lie in bed and not sleep for ages. You and then I'd tell you in bed. Hmm? What's you tell you in bed? Little bit. Little bit, but not very often. I'll tend to read on that Kindle so there's yeah, no light in that. So. Um, but it's mad. That's had a big difference. Yeah. A, and, and I was like, well, it can't be that simple. So it's improved a lot. So what other things are you guys doing for sleep then? The Well, that just reading everything and just following everything by the book, which is the boring stuff. It is, I. Uh, it's so important. Like, uh, you have to do it. Yeah. And people don't realise how, if you, all chronic illnesses, there's not one thing that sleep doesn't help. Like, everything is related to sleep. And it's so underrated. It's man, I say this about me son. Whenever he's ill, mm-hmm. all he does is sleep. And we're like, you're sleeping yourself better. It's the most basic thing. Sleeping yourself better. Uh, The most basic thing. But there's so many things now that are fighting against it. Yeah. That you can't get a good night's sleep. Yeah. So, Sarah's business, what we haven't announced yet, Mm. uh, she's created 
an amazing pair of blue light blotting glasses. Oh, I might have seen you wear them. Have you? Do you wear them or not? No, they're me uh, Jimmy Savile glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's such a fact. That's I've got. No. I've been cancelled twice just in this interview. I'm not. <laughs> that, I either, every time I wear them, I'm like, I either look here like fucking Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Oh, I look like fucking that guy. <laughs> Tony Stark, Tony Stark glasses. But you can get some really cool ones now, right? I made a nice Did the work? They did do. the work? They we, do. we forgot we were going to bring you a pair. Oh, they definitely work if you're watching the telly. Or if you make them right. Phone. Yeah, yes. they'll have to be made right. Yeah. So, so we've got them right, and that, we're going to be bringing that business out uh, in, in the next couple of months. Mm-hmm. What are you going to call it? Jizz, after the girls. Oh, All sick. Girls are yeah. called Jay Jesse Jody. So the glasses are called Jizz, Jizz Eyewear. Um, so, so, yeah. Jay. Jade, Jesse, Jade, Jesse, and Jordy. Jordy, uh, Jeffries. Yeah, yeah. So I love it's it. All the J's. So it's uh, like Riz with J's, and it looks like nice little. Oh, little sick! Nice J bands. Yeah, bands. J bands. I love it. Thailand. Roy bands, them man. They're Roy bands. <laughs> so uh, I, so that's a big thing for sleep with me. If I ever, I'm trying not. I try to keep off my phone, but it's easier said than done. Oh, I do. I put mm. the, uh, I put them on, Glasses on. my phone, and it's it's a game changer. But what you're doing with the Kindle reading, no. that's all. That's great as it well. Helps a ton. Uh, yeah, it helps a ton. Helps a ton. I've got the thing in the morning. Where do you know the thing that gradually wakes you up with a light? Mm-hmm. And loomy light. Oh, is things. that really good? I really good. I never feel like I never feel like it's like a harsh. Do you know when your alarm goes off and you're like, yeah, and yeah. Then you're, I can't get up. Yeah. I never feel like I want to snooze with that light because it starts off like red, and then it gets bright and bright and brighter, yeah. and then it's waking the alarm up. part never really goes off uh-huh. because you're the wake light one. wakes you're it up, there, uh-huh. but it's not really harsh. Yeah, like it's, it's not waking you up like an alarm will wake you up in the middle of a cycle, like a prop die, and you'll fail horrible. Aye. If you wake up gradually, you'll finish a sleep cycle, and Aye. that's how you're supposed to wake up. It's, you, you just think of it being like a caveman. Aye. The sun's coming up, and you wake up with the sun. Aye. Aye. and that 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 thing there, and also making sure that I don't lie in past six. It's weird though. Like I'm, I, I am setting the alarm, mm-hmm. but it never really goes off because right. that light thing seems to yeah. wake me up slow and it's yeah. a bit more gentle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think so often it's like, right, I'm either going to hit snooze and jump out of bed or I'm going to jump out of bed, get a coffee and then just go 100 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. I actually like to go a bit slower in the morning. Other yeah. things that help is not eating right before bed. Yeah, so it, it everything's related to your sleep. The, you bet your good sleep starts the minute that you wake up. So like it's harder here, but you have to get outside, get light in your eyes. <laughs> you know, like, fucking right, it's harder here. Yeah. So <laughs> get light hard. in your eyes, man. But... It doesn't have to be There was sunny. a period, I think it was January, right, this month, where I was like, I was waking up and it was dark as fuck. I was taking the kids to school and it was just light. Yeah. yeah. And then I was picking them up from school and it was fucking dark again. That's yeah. hard, that. Yeah, yeah really mate, it really is hard. hard. And that's one of the... You must have found that a big challenge being home then. Be my darkness. Be my biggest challenge being, it? being home with that, you know... It's not getting light until what was it like eight o'clock in the morning, and then it's getting dark at like three forty five oh, p.m. And now. I'm like on my wheel, like in LA, I'd be on my way back at, to to home at like three o'clock, yeah. and it's sun shining. Get back and do. I bet that work. feels like at three o'clock, like your day's just starting. It which is. sounds mad. Yeah. But really when it hits three o'clock, here I'm like, oh, the day's over. I want to yeah. go. I want to go home, watch Netflix, and Aye. relax and go Aye. to bed. And Aye. also because it's cold, you don't want to go outside for a walk, and that's what you need to do. Aye. You need, even if it's cloudy, there's still like certain rays Aye. that hit in your eyes. That's good for you. Aye. But you don't want to go outside because it's freezing. So, so Who's so big on this at the minute? Huberman's big on it, isn't he? Do you know yeah. him, Andrew oh, Huberman? Yeah. I love yeah. his shit. Yeah. He gets yeah. his points across so quickly. He's massive on that thing. Yeah, it's huge. It's so good for you. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, so what what with people in the northeast that does well, like yourself, it, mm. I, it makes me think like bloody hell, because it's hard to get motivated here. Yeah. So if you can get motivated here and do well here, you yeah. can do it anywhere in the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. I really I really believe that. Yeah. It's mad. Well, you guys, um, where <laughs> Tony can people find out more about you? About me. Uh, YouTube. If the, is YouTube if the not, best place? No, if if you go to Instagram, go to Paul Mort's page and then click who he's following and then, <laughs> and then search me. I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I used to be. <laughs> If if he st- if he's still got Instagram after this podcast, <laughs> then I get cancelled, right? <laughs> I've been thrown off Instagram. Imagine that. Part of us will be like, actually, I'll be all, I'll be all right with that, you know. Imagine how it's weird because it, it, social media is such a double edged thing in it. Mm-hmm. You're like fucking hell. I love it sometimes, and other times I'm thinking, would my life be better without this? Well, one thing it's a really interesting on, thing, isn't it? One thing I've done on Instagram is I've muted everyone, all the stories and the posts. My friend so, did that. 
now, now I'm, I use it for me. My friend Darren did that. He actually unfollowed everybody, but then he had to apologise to loads of people. Yeah. I, I, I just, I wound him up. I was like, you fucking unfollowed me. <laughs> you dick. But then he had, he start, basically he cleared it and then he started again and then he mutes everybody as well. Yeah, just Which I kind of, I kind of, that's a nice idea. Like, but, well, so you're going on to create instead of consume. Exactly. Yeah. The DMs and then and then put and post. So you won't have seen that thing I said about you then. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, man. <laughs> well, it wasn't. That was. <laughs> it was. So Instagram is the best place to. Uh, uh, yeah. It's where a lot of your links are in it. You can go yeah, on that link tree and every, find everything every, that you do. Everything's uh, on there, but it's pretty, pretty easy to find us. I love it. Sarah, what about you? Same thing. Yeah. Instagram. Instagram. Nurse Instagram, Sarah. Yeah. That, it's like the, probably the central. It's the easiest one where everything's like. Yeah, central, and you can yeah. direct people. Yeah. Elsewhere. It's like the modern day business card, Instagram. It is, right? It's like, it's like people share in Instagram accounts with other people. Like, have you seen this person? Have mm-hmm. you seen this person? Yeah. And you can contact people yeah. through that. Sick. I love it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you.